and seventh meeting all time between the fifth ranked Tigers of LSU and the Rebs of Ole Miss. And with that, we say welcome to the final Saturday night in September. Welcome to Brian Greasy. I'm Steve Levy. Two things we know for sure. We are jacked to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely excited about tonight. And also, no one expected LSU to be in this spot. Expectations were not high. They rip off two wins against top 10 teams in the, in the first three weeks. And here yeah. they are. I mean, just look at what a difference a month makes for Ed Orgeron and this LSU program. A lot of anxiety for the LSU faithful in the offseason. The month of August was a month to forget yeah. for Ed O. The transfers, obviously the two quarterbacks that transferred, three guys suspended from the team. They didn't know. A lot of questions on offense. New quarterback, new running back, new coordinator, everything new. But all they've done is beat two top ten teams, and they put themselves in great position. We'll be tested here tonight. Let's do an alphabet soup or gumbo, if you will, including these surroundings. Todd McShay is down on the field. We know all about DBU, about the great defensive backs. What about NWO, the nasty wideouts of Ole Miss? Well, we're loaded with talent on that side of the ball. It's going to be fun to watch. Rarely do you get five first-round picks on the field at the same time, Steve. And that's what we've got tonight when Ole Miss has the ball. They're wide receivers, you mentioned. D.K. Metcalf, A.J. Brown, then Greg Little at the left tackle spot. Then on the defensive side, you got uh, Greedy Williams and Devin White at the linebacker spot. It's going to be an awesome matchup to watch tonight. And we will do just that. Both the rain and Garth Brooks, Colin Baton Rouge have wrapped up. And we are ready to roll. Better than 100,000 on hand here at Tiger Stadium. LSU has won the toss and they have deferred. The true freshman, Avery Atkins, kicks it away. And it will go out of the end zone for the touchback. Jordan Ta'amu, the quarterback, he is not taking the typical path of your average SEC signal caller. Played his high school football in his native Hawaii, had zero scholarship offers. Zippo went to the New Mexico Military Institute for two years, had a big sophomore season there. Offers only from Minnesota and Ole Miss. He settled nicely into Oxford. And this is the game a year ago where Jordan Ta'amu got his opportunity. Shea Patterson was hurt in this game in Oxford. Tom Mudell, he did was come in and lead two scores guys right off the bat. Everybody's been waiting for this one. First down and 10 from the 25. And you want to give that to the home field advantage, Bruce, <laughs> before we play a single snap, delay a game on the visitors. That's the best way to get this crowd into the game. Does have an offensive penalty on the first snap. Welcome to first and 15. Tomo throwing, juggled and dropped by A.J. Brown. Down to Todd, the I'm, McShea matchup. And I mentioned in the open with the two wide receivers, the first rounders, Talking about DK Metcalf and then AJ Brown. We only got one first rounder at corner in Greedy, uh, Greedy Williams. Going to be very interested to see how they match him up in this game tonight. Well, Todd, he's matched up on DK Metcalf at the bottom of the screen. Second and 15 to throw. Shot down the sideline. And it is intercepted. Let's see if he was in bounds. Everybody wants to talk about Greedy Williams, but Grant Delpit is emerging as a star on this defense for LSU. Here he is right here. He's just going to read the eyes of Jordan Tomlin when he tries to throw this bait to the outside. Look at this range, Steve. Look how far he goes to go and get this football. That is athleticism, it's anticipation, and it's executing and finishing on the back end. Look like a true center fielder coming out of nowhere to make a diving grab. For Delpit, his second interception of the season, and LSU will take over with outstanding field position. With Nick Rosette, the ball carrier, he'll cross midfield. 
And that's going to be something to watch, okay? That's going to be something to watch is how they play DK Metcalf defensively. Joe Burrow, the transfer from Ohio State, where he backed up a couple of years, did not win the starting job, and he moved on. We've seen that in college football. He's, he's been in some big games already for LSU, obviously. Miami and on the road against Auburn. But the first opportunity for him to play here in Death Valley at night against an SEC opponent. See how he handles it. Second down and six, just across midfield. On the ground to Brosette. Josiah Cody makes the stop. The biggest question marks for LSU coming into this game is the health of that offensive line. Not Garrett Brumfield out for this game. They suspended Ingram, who was their best player in August. No Sadiq Charles, no Chasen Hines. So your left guard is going to be Donovan Campbell and your left tackle, Adrian McGee, who they get back from injury. This is the fifth starting lineup, fifth change for them in five games. Complete to Steven Sullivan, and he has first down yardage. Nice call here, nice easy throw to get Joe Burrow into the game. You stack the wide receivers. Jordan Jefferson is going to garner some attention. So put him outside, let him draw that attention, then come back inside for the first down. Chris Curry, true freshman, has checked in. Burrow hands it off to Curry. Just his fifth carry of the season. Markel Winters makes the stop. He's one of the keys to this Ole Miss defense. Well, certainly he needs to play well, but this Ole Miss defense needs to play much better in general. They have been downright awful, Steve. There's no other way to put it. But you're they've, being kind they, there. They have been, and granted, I'll take the Alabama game out of it because they were overmatched, right? They had no shot, but they haven't played well defensively at all this season against teams like Texas Tech and others. So in this game, I think the approach is they're going to sell out. Matt Luke wants to stop the run and force Joe Burrow to beat him. 27 missed tackles against Kent State a week ago. So the LSU offense can do to them. There's Burrow to throw. They'll set out of the backfield. And he'll be forced out of bounds by Momo Sonogo. Just to look at it. This Ole Miss defense, they're last in every category in the SEC. And I think the biggest issue, we talked with Wesley McGriff, their defensive coordinator last night, the biggest issue is tackling. So as we watch this game together, let's check the, the tackling for Ole Miss. They need to get more guys to the football and fit the tackle more consistently. Third down and seven. Six defensive backs for Rebs. Burrow to throw. And nearly intercepted. Fight for the ball. D. Anderson and Jalen Julius. And it falls harmlessly to the soggy turf. Great play by Jalen Julius. They brought a corner fire off the weak side. That left Julius one on one with the rising D. Anderson, who's getting more and more looks and more and more confidence. But Julius there just in time to knock that football away. Enter Cole Tracy, the local cult hero. <laughs> This is right in his range, 53. <laughs> 53 on the button. To put LSU on the board. Snap in place, a perfect. And the field goal off the crossbar, and no good. Wow, he had a 54-yarder earlier in the year that skipped off of the crossbar and in. I think that Coach O might need to adjust the range to 52 from 54. Around these parts is starting to compare Grant Delpit to Jamal Adams. Everything except the personality. Yeah. Maybe the loud voice, too. Well, I don't care what kind of personality. If you make big plays like this, that was the first drive against Auburn. This is the first drive against Ole Miss. Grant Delpit, yeah, he doesn't have a, he kind of whispers. But he shouts on the field. On first down, here's Scotty Phillips into the secondary first down yardage across midfield. Brought down by Greedy Williams. But not until a gain of 23. Scotty Phillips has to impact this game for Ole Miss offensively. They're going to go as fast as they possibly can. They want to test the conditioning of LSU's defense. 
from the 41 of the Tigers. Tiago the throw. There's a flag down. It's two flags are on the field right now as Metcalf could not hang on. There was a flag down before he hooked up with Greedy Williams. Definitely going to be pass interference on Greedy Williams. It's a question of what the flag is back at the line of scrimmage. But I think you're going to see anytime Greedy Williams matched up against DK Metcalf, Jordan Tomo is going to take a shot. He doesn't care how good Greedy Williams is. Legal formation, offense number one, pass interference, defense number 29. Those fouls offset, Tony's canceled, they will keep the down, first down. Ken Williamson there is our referee tonight. And a break for Coach O. Would have been 15 yards. Very clear pass interference with Greedy Williams. So we'll do it over. Just like on the schoolyard. Greedy Williams isn't backing off. LSU still man to man and they're talking to each other in the perimeter. Keep it on the ground of Phillips. Won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Dropped for a loss by Jacob Phillips. Yeah, Todd, I think we're going to have to keep an eye. So far, LSU very comfortable allowing Greedy Williams to play man-to-man -man on DK Metcalf. What that tells us is LSU and Dave Aranda has a little bit more respect right now for DK Metcalf than A.J. Brown even, who's been their bell cow, so you got to get the ball to Brown. Pass is complete. Out to the 40 to A.J. Brown. Carry Vincent on the coverage, and Vincent will play a critical role tonight. And that's exactly what Ole Miss needs to do. If they're going to put Greedy Williams on Metcalf, then Brown is going to have a mismatch in the slot. That time it was Carry Vincent. It might be Grant Delpit at times, but that's the matchup they have to exploit. Third down to nine. Pressure up the middle. They pick it up, but flags fly. Looked like Greg Little might have jumped. Yeah, Little jumped. But was he forced to jump by Michael Divinity coming off the edge? Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 79. Five yards penalty. And they third down. They go Javon Patterson, who stands next to Little on the left side of that offensive line. A rock solid offensive line for Ole Miss. One of the best parts of their offense. I think this changes a little bit for the thinking of Jordan Tamu. You don't need to force the ball here. If you get to the 35 and bring up a fourth and four, maybe Matt Luke will go for it. Third and 14. Let's see what this conversation is about. We met with Tamu yesterday, and he's soft-spoken. That's got to be hard. I'll try to speak above this crowd. In this environment, yeah, it would be tough if they had to actually communicate as a quarterback in this offense, but they don't. It's all signals. But he was running up to the offensive line. He was saying something. Trying to communicate a change in protection. Yeah, that's the one thing that's on his plate. And no doubt it's going to get loud in here. All right, now they'll wind the play clock. That was the reason for that stoppage. Excellent protection. Ta'amu hits his man on the money. It's Braylon Sanders to the 25 for the first down. Great protection, gain of 19. You said it, Steve. Take a look at this offensive line. They pick up this twist inside perfectly. Anticipated throw from Jordan Ta'amu. Great execution for Braylon Sanders. Sanders has been one of the pleasant surprises for the Rebels. On the ground, back to Phillips. First down yardage, and they're mixing the run with the pass. You, gotta, you have to weather the storm, the, the initial storm that Ole Miss is going to throw at you. They did it against Alabama, for crying out loud, okay? They had a long touchdown pass. You have to get used to the speed, to the combination of how they run inside and throw outside. Yeah, the Alabama game was a 7-7 game, but that was 62-7. Nine and a half to go in the first quarter. Second possession. For Ole Miss. Incomplete. Braylon Sanders could not bring it down. Christian Fulton had the coverage. They faked it into the belly of Phillips. I'm fascinated to watch this matchup between these wideouts, as we mentioned. 
against these defensive backs. It's going to be man-to-man -man coverage. Dave Aranda is kind of drawing a line in the sand right now, saying your guys are going to have to beat our guys. And there's going to be a lot of tight, contested throws and catches. Can Old Miss bring them down consistently? Tom will throw it. DK Metcalf came back to his quarterback and still couldn't make the play. Back-to-back -back drops in the red zone on the road in this kind of environment. These are the things that drive Matt Luke crazy. This team is trying to get to the next level. They depend on their offense and their best players or receivers. They got to make the play. Third and ten. again Demarcus Lodge could not haul it in in the back corner of the end zone wow three drops in a row Steve this is a great job by Jordan Tamu giving Lodge an opportunity it's right there even if he caught that ball it didn't look like his left foot would have come down in bounds that's just an awareness of where you are on the field Lodge not able to convert here's Luke Logan 30 yard field goal attempt on the way and puts it through and Ole Miss breaks the score sheet three nothing Rebels well the LSU community awoke yesterday to tragic news Tigers basketball player Wade Sims raised right here in Baton Rouge was shot and killed early yesterday morning during an altercation Sims is fondly remembered by teammates friends and university officials alike before tonight's game they held a moment of silence in his memory the LSU family mourns the loss of one of our own. As junior basketball player and Baton Rouge native, Wade Sims passed away yesterday morning. Please join together in a moment of silence for Wade Sims, his family, friends, and teammates. He will be missed by us all. All of us at ESPN send out our condolences to Wade's parents, Faye and Wayne, his friends and family. Very tragic, tragic loss. Clyde Edwards Elaine. Out of the end zone. We'll bring it out to the 18-yard line. A bit of a skirmish breaks out. Some of the different kinds of emotion on display here in this football game. And it's been a tough time. We talked with Coach O in LSU and they had this uh, this heartbeat get together on Fridays at three o'clock and they said they would they would speak of their teammate from the basketball program and some of the players were deeply affected. Well, by I think this. I think what people need to realize is how close the athletic communities the teams Third are on a campus basketball football women's soccer. They all eat together. They're, they're friendly. And so this was a friend of a lot of these players that are out here playing tonight with heavy hearts. Devin White in particular. Ball spotted at the 19. Take the pitch. And on the run, Foster Moreau, the tight end. Very close to first down yardage. And there's an injured player down on the field. That's Jalen Julius. Made his made the tackle on Morrow. He was the first man there. And he will require some attention. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Lexus. Experience amazing. We could come to Baton Rouge, Leaves, and not at least get you a little jambalaya. Yeah. Thanks for uh, joining me at the tailgate, you know, before the game. Thanks to Ed and Mimi Roberson and their whole crowd. Yeah. Well, 
welcome in us there. Good grub. Really What'd you like? Uh, I like the gumbo. Whatever else you were feeding me, it was, it was, it was really spicy. good. Can I say that normally we get our assignments on Sunday and emails start to come in about coaches' meetings. This was all about food this week. <laughs> come and on, you know it's all about food every week. Every email and text is about places you got to hit. And you come to Baton Rouge. There is no place like this. So we had to hit the uh, the wares before the game. It was awesome. We're going to have to fast this week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Burrow said when he got on campus, he lost 10 pounds. Uh, he gained 10 pounds right away. To the poor boys. Jalen Julius appeared to be okay when he came off the field. Kedron Smith will take his spot. Second down of the walk. But Chris Curry will have enough forward progress. The man they call Baby Beast Mode as he runs like Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Nick Brissett really has become their bell cow, but Clyde Edwards Alaire and Curry certainly have been supplementing him. And Steve Ensminger, the new offensive coordinator, wants to get this run game going, but then he also wants to take eight shots a game. That's what Coach O wants him to do. We'll see if they do that tonight. Also got another four net on the roster as a running back. We'll watch for Lennard. First out of 10. Just beyond the 30. Burrow takes a look at who's behind him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Edwards Allaire behind him, now in front of him. For first down yardage, and Adnan Burke. Yeah, thank you. We understand if your attention is a little divided, at least for our first half tonight. Adnan will keep you posted on everything else going on. Burrow on the money to Stephen Sullivan. Coming across. Big time throw from Joe Burrow, and he gets pounded in the backfield. Well, we mentioned it, right? What Steve Enzeminger wants to do, run the football, and then these hard play actions. Coach O is telling us they want to do that with two wide receiver routes, keep protection in, and allow these big wide receivers to eat on the back end. Gain of 19 there against Smith in place of Julius. Something to watch for. You know LSU is aware. Edwards Allaire. The ball carrier. There is a flag down. <laughs> who jumped in there early. Looked like they had a real good angle on that defensive line. Offside, defense number 95. Five yards penalty. Keep it down. That's Benito Jones, a little too good of an angle. A bit of good news for Ole Miss defensively. Julian, Jalen Julius back in the game at corner. If he were not able to come back, it was going to be Keydron Smith, who's a true freshman. They're really excited about him. He's got a little bit more length. Than, uh, than Julius at 6-2, which might help. They might need him anyway, Steve, in this game because LSU has two receivers over 6-6. And there's a player down for Ole Miss. It's C.J. Moore. And that was when both teams were coming to the line to snap the football. That was well after the last play. Well, he was he was kind of slow getting up from the last play, and, and I think he went in the huddle and then came out and took a knee because he feels like something's wrong. As Moore walks off, one of the leaders, Joe Burrow spent the first three years of his career at Ohio State, the last two backing up before transferring here to LSU. His new teammates appreciate everything he brings to the party. Burrow has them up quickly. Hunt is a pylon! He just kind of has a quiet confidence about him that, that we really like and we really respect. I feel like I've brought some playmaking, some leadership. He was a puzzle piece that we were missing, and, and we're, we're so glad he's here. Does a lot of the little things, Steve. You know, checking at the line of scrimmage, not turning the ball over. Pretty good fake there. Edward Zolaire moving down to the 20-yard line. He's got first down yardage. Gain of eight on the play. This is their outside zone. That's their version of the outside zone for LSU. They want to press, press, press outside and then allow the running back to cut. It's nice, nicely done. For the throw, taking a shot, and it's caught! Jamar Chase for the touchdown! The 
big time throw and catch here. Jamar Chase, just a true freshman. The back shoulder throw gets the foot down inbounds. And Joe Burrow has made a living so far this season in the Auburn game and now here in the first quarter of this football game with a back shoulder throw for the touchdown. You know, LSU does not have the high level of receivers that Ole Miss does, but LSU has excellent depth at the wide receiver position. And Jamar Chase is a part of that. The extra point is good. Under six to play here in a loud first quarter from Tiger Stadium. Burrow goes three for three on the drive, paying it off with a touchdown pass to Jamar Chase. Got a dandy for you on Monday night. It's an AFC West battle. The undefeated Chiefs be in the Mile High City to take on the Broncos. Give me simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. You can watch that game and every game on the ESPN app with ESPN+. Plus. Start your free trial of ESPN+. Plus Today, we were all over the app all afternoon, watching all the great action from around the country as we focus in on this one. Ole Miss trailing by four with Elijah Moore. Out to the 20-yard line. Once again, here's Adnan Burke. It's an unbelievable night slate of games. Usually there's yeah. one game, two games. Feels like there are four or five big ones out there tonight. So again, we understand if your attention is Somewhat divided. We'll let you slide for our first half a little bit, but that's why Adnan is there. Keep you updated on everything going on in college football. Oh, missed the throw to A.J. Brown. He'll lower the shoulder and get out just shy of the 25. Greedy Williams on the coverage. You got to get this wide receiving crew with their attention fully on this game because of the three drops at the end of the last drive prevented a touchdown. That's four points. You're not going to get back. It's the difference in the game so far. I mean, if that's their one advantage in the game, they can't have those guys dropping footballs. On the ground, Scotty Phillips, the spin move. He's out across the 25. Greedy Williams makes the stop. And if you, you think Greedy's on the birth certificate, uh, no, it's not. That's not his real name. In fact, his grandmother gave him that nickname. He was a baby. They used to give him a bottle. It was never enough milk. <laughs> she kept calling him Greedy. Ian so and Jim Harbaugh. Can't blame the kid for a lot of more milk. Four tackles already on the young evening for Greedy Williams. Here's third and four. Tom, who has a man wide open and overshot to Marcus Lodge. Had it for a big game. LSU is very fortunate. The corner fell down. That's Kelvin Joseph. Just a little bit of a double. Ooh, great release off the line of scrimmage by Demarcus Lodge. And Tamu just wants that one back because that was a touchdown. He normally hits those, but he put a little bit more air on it. When a guy's that wide open, don't try to make the perfect throw. Give it a little bit of air and let him run under it. Luke Logan back to punt it away from the 16. Jonathan Giles is back for LSU. Called for the fair catch out of the 27-yard line. That's where LSU will take over with their 7-3 lead. It's a 47-yard punt. I can take a look at this LSU offense when they get this run game going especially behind that right side look at what it does in play action Steve allows you to get these big wide receivers this time it's Sullivan D Anderson gets involved but the downfield game comes off of that hard play action and they finish that last drive with a true freshman for the touchdown with Leonard Fournette in the backfield behind Joe Burrow and Fournette will get the carry on the right side, off for size, and he's out beyond the 35-yard line. Jaquez Jones made the stop. We asked the coaching staff about the similarities between the four net boys, and, and they said, well, look, look, Leonard is really good, but his brother was really special. <laughs> hey, very good is good. Yeah, not everybody not, can yeah, be special. That's not fair to him. Like, he, he's a different kind of player. You can see he's a different kind of build. Uh, he's a little bit uh, quicker, more of a slasher, whereas we all know what Leonard Fournette was in the SEC for a long time. 
We'll see if Fournette's going to be healthy enough tomorrow. The Jaguars host the Jets. First down yardage on second down and three. Willie Hibbler made the stop. Steve, I was watching a lot of tape of LSU's offense uh, in preparation for this game. And one guy stood out to me. It's their center. His name's Lloyd Cushenberry, and he's starting for the first time this season, and he has quickly become one of the leaders of this football team. Excellent center. He's very athletic, very smart. Watch him tonight in the middle of this offense and how he gets to the second level, gets on linebackers, and reaches defensive linemen. It's very impressive. 79 and white. First down and 10. Off the play fake. Burrow gets it away. Racy McMahon down the sideline. Spins once more and loses the football. They're going to say he was down after a 23 yard gain. C.J. Miller was trying to go the other way with the football. Ed Orgeron was telling us they want to get Racy McMath into this football game. He's a receiver. They've converted him to a tight end, and he's begun to make plays almost immediately. You're right, that right elbow was clearly down. But if they get this young man, 6'3, 220 pounds, involved, especially at that tight end position where they've needed some help, Foster Morrow is their kind of in line blocking tight end. They need a pass catching tight end to make this offense more explosive. So Burrow started hot, 6 of 7, on the ground of Fournette. Able to get across the line of scrimmage. Jacques Jones, the stop, the true freshman from Tuscaloosa, makes the tackle. Burrow trying to scamper out there off the four nets hands and falls away incomplete again Jones on the coverage. I can't help but think that, that ball might be a little slick had a lot of rain today this afternoon there was a little bit of rain coming down maybe 10 minutes ago and sometimes it's even more difficult to handle the football when there's a little bit of rain. Yeah, you see that little bit just coming down and makes it that ball a little bit slippery. If I have one more person tells me tell me that it doesn't rain inside a Tiger Stadium. I lose my mind. It's raining people. Get over it. There's Burrow going to get out of it. And he will smartly get out of bounds at the 20. After a gain of 15. It's a great decision. We talked about the little things. Let this roll guys you're going to see. Joe Burrow, nothing open at this decision point. He says, okay, there's nobody here. This is the only guy I got to beat. Look at all of that. Great decision from Joe Burrow. It's Burrow again, the ball carrier. It's the Joe Burrow show time. You know, Brian, the whole night I've noticed how quick he is going through his progressions. Burrow really, if he doesn't like what he sees initially, he's going to that second read, then quickly to his third read, and then it's out of, the, out of there, whether it's the check down or taking off running. Listen, he doesn't have the biggest arm, he's not the biggest guy, and he's not the most mobile quarterback, but the reason they're winning and having success on offense, I think a big part of it is because of his quick decision making. There's no question, and that's, you know, that's the coach's kid. I mean, we say that a lot, you know, and, and sometimes it's a, it's a nasty moniker that you're a coach's kid, but in this case, it's certainly helping him. Burrow gives it to the first man through. That's Torrey Carter, the fullback. He has the first down on second and two. Burrow also is not really experienced. Look, he's been around, right, three years in the Ohio State program. But tonight he's making just his fifth start as a college quarterback. Been impressive. And talk about his, his father as the defensive coordinator, Jimmy Burrow, uh, at Ohio, University of Ohio. And it's a really unique thing because when you have a defensive uh, coach as a father you look at things differently right and he's looking at Joe saying hey man this is what how I would play you and it's a little bit of a different look and I think it helps him first and goal for a throw for it lost one and Derek Dillon just turned around too late the ball was already there they're gonna get personal foul rough on the quarterback what a big time you think you get a stop and just at the end, let's take a look. It's, it's unblocked. That's Ruggs, the linebacker. And he comes up with the arm around the neck. Like, you just, I got it. You want to hit the ball, so go high. But just don't come down with that arm around the head. 
Fourth penalty already on Ole Miss. They cannot afford that. Not in this spot of the field, not tonight. Handoff. Nick Grosset. Second third effort into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. is a great sign for this LSU offensive line. They've had some injuries. They've had some guys suspended, but they have continued to work and get this team in a position where they can run the football consistently in this football game, and it's been all on the ground for them. Cole Tracy puts the extra point through. Nine plays, 71 yards. In under four minutes for the score. And it was such an impressive start for LSU. Running the football on the ground behind the big uglies. Joe Burrow making quick decisions. Receivers making plays. LSU's got to roll. Back for the final minute of play. Here at Baton Rouge. Better known as Death Valley on a Saturday night. Late night start has all the makings. Ole Miss and LSU. Tigers missed a field goal their first opportunity, but have come back with consecutive touchdowns after that. For a 14 to 3 lead. Here's Adnan Burke in the studio. Thank you. This is like the Buckeyes start to settle in now after a rocky start. Yeah, they didn't look very good in that first quarter, but they've got a lot of talent. Ole Miss comes out firing. Big stick. Braden Fajoko. No, Fajoko gets the stick. He's coming right here, but watch Delpit come off the edge. Fajoko is just too quick. He beats the pulling guard. That was almost intercepted by Telpit. One of the few players that Coach Aranda said they're going to try to rush a little bit more off the edge. They've got to manufacture a run. Here's the pressure. Tomo gets out of it. Directing traffic down the sideline and off the fingertips of A.J. Brown. It falls incomplete. Third down. You're exactly right, Todd. They brought Delpit again off the edge. He's a leading sack man on this LSU team. They've had a hard time getting pressure on opposing quarterbacks, so Dave Aranda's trying to be creative. And Delpit, he said, is one of my best edge rushers. He almost got Tomu there. Caleb on chase side is the, maybe their most gifted player, the pass rusher out for the season. Injured his knee in the opener. Tom, who was missed on his last five. Third and ten. Do I hear six? Tom, who didn't feel the backside pressure, and he's dropped. Who else? It's Grant Delpit again. Adding to his sack totals. And this is a coverage sack all the way. It was picked up by the Scotty Phillips. Delpit's going to come here, and Scotty Phillips is going to pick him up. But look back here. There's nowhere to go with the football. Tom, who is holding that ball, got fooled by Dave Aranda, one of the best defensive coordinators in all of college football. And one of the things that he does best, Steve, is he'll get pressure, but he won't give up any easy throws on the back end. And that time he got Tiamo. It's also the reason he's the highest paid coordinator. Freshly minted two and a half million. In all the land. Pretty good gig, and you don't have to deal with all, all the fundraising <laughs> and all the boosters and all the alumni. Just get the coach the defense. It's going good right now for the home team. 14-3 Tigers after one. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, we welcome you to the second quarter. And there you see defensive coordinator Dave Aranda 
Calling all the right plays, pulling all the right strings. Nine straight games without a first quarter touchdown allowed, and it's simplest form almost ensures you get off to a good start in the football game. Yeah, and that's like I said, one of one of if not the best. He and Brent Venables, in my opinion, defensive coordinators in all the all the land. Mac Brown gets it away, and it'll take an old Miss bounce down to the 17-yard line. You can be a great defensive coordinator when you got a guy like Grant Delpit. Certainly he is an eraser on the back end for LSU. Take a look at the range. This is the first drive for Ole Miss. You got Greedy Williams on DK Metcalf. Try to lob it out there and the guy plays center field and got the range. Then he comes off the edge as one of the best pass rushers, believe it or not. We've seen more and more of these DBs like a Tyron Matthew, right? Like a Jamal Adams that are comfortable playing around the line of scrimmage and Grant Delpit is in that exact mold. Now Rich Eisen will appreciate the love for the punter. Mac Brown, that's a career-long 63-yard punt. That has LSU backed up to their own 17. And on first down, Nick Brossett able to get out to the 20 for three yards. We'll see Joe Burrow getting into a rhythm here now. His first night game here against an SEC opponent. They've scored two touchdowns and they've, they've been able to run the ball on the ground. They've been able to throw it. He looks comfortable. Decisions are being are being made quickly as Todd mentioned and uh, Joe Burrow every game he's playing he's getting more and more comfortable in this system. Off the play fake. Burrow who's rushed twice. Make it three times and he stumbles out of bounds. Can't get enough of these big Shane matchups. I know you love it. Levy. Uh, listen, I think it's been all the backs tonight, really the offensive line, but you really have to look at the run game and Nick, Nick Rosset, what he's been able to do. 15 uh, carries of 10 plus yards this season, second in the SEC. And I think JV and Hamilton's the other guy to keep an eye on. They moved him as 177 pounds from corner into that star position. So he's gonna have to strap it up tonight. What I love is the pose that leads I into know, the McShane matchup. Oh, yeah, yeah, he slipped, he slipped that in on us. America needs more McShane matchups. <laughs> Here's Burrow to throw. And connect to Steven Sullivan for the first down. Well, you wonder who's going to follow up. You know, Leonard Fournette and Darius Geis, right? That's, those are hard shoes to fill. And it's been by committee tonight. And I think that's what Steve Ensminger wants to have accomplished. You've got to have more than one back in the SEC. Throwing on first down, Jonathan Giles, excellent tackle. JV and Hamilton came up to make the stop, and those are so hard. You're out there all by yourself, and I really appreciate plays like that. That's exactly what Todd was talking about there with the importance of JV and Hamilton being moved inside. And I think it has a lot to do, guys, with tackling. He's been out on that corner and he hasn't really been involved in the box and he's one of their better tacklers so Wesley McGriff their defensive coordinator says let's get him closer to the line of scrimmage. Guessing he used to work out and go up against his cousin Dante Moncrief the former wide receiver at Ole Miss. Pretty good bloodlines there. Second down and nine. Some pressure up the middle. Burrow on the run. Throwing and dropped. D. Anderson was coming over to make the grab. Zedrick Woods had the coverage. There's some chaos on that Ole Miss sideline. I thought Anderson made that play for a second. Yeah, it looked like he made that play, but just a little bit of a bobble at the very end. Great throw from Joe Burrow. Again, safe throw. Looked like D. Anderson went in hard and hit the uh, equipment. Yeah, he hit the equipment to shed there. That does not feel all, good. With all the rain we had, especially before the game, it's like an old school field where all the, the rain drains down the side. These sidelines are an absolute mess. Let's check my shoes after the game. <laughs> You've got those aprons behind the benches that look like they're soggy as well. Catch is made. It's Sullivan. He's short of the marker. Going to bring up fourth down. And these are the little things, right? Sullivan, when you run a route on third down, you got to go at least two yards beyond the sticks so that when you come, come back down your stem on that route, that you have enough yardage for the first down. And he's a junior. He should know better. First punt of the night upcoming for Zach Von Rosenberg. Be 
a timeout here for Ole Miss. Timeout. Ole Miss. First timeout of the half. And we're the sixth oldest player in college football at 27 years old, like Bob Rosenberg is. You learn some patience. <laughs> You're watching the SEC on ESPN, presented by Geico. Steve, oh, looks like LSU is going to go for it here on fourth down. Forget about that old punt. It took the time out maybe <laughs> to talk about it. Why I would you go for it here in this situation? Buddy? Yeah, Todd, I don't know. I mean, you're up 14-3, and Ole Miss has been shooting themselves in the foot. Why would you give them any opportunity? Coach O, he's a riverboat gambler. Two of three on the season on fourth down. With two tight ends in there. applauding himself you would think that was the best play of the night by the way LSU is celebrating it offside defense number 99 the five yard penalty was on the first down so Joe Burrow has done this time and time again this season and I love it because you don't see this in college football anymore the traditional hard count a lot of reason is because guys are in the shotgun but Joe Burrow gets under center look at the inflection his head bobs a little bit you can get away with that a little bit of a head bob but that is a very valuable tool for a quarterback Well, they sold it so well that they, they got me they got greasy and they, <laughs> they got the Ole Miss D line fifth penalty of the night for Ole Miss LSU has not been flagged and Ole Miss burns a timeout as well there here's Brosette the ball carrier with a fresh set of downs he's out to midfield well, we talked about that, Todd, right? It's, it's the little things that Joe Burrow does well. He's not going to bowl you over with his arm strength. He's not going to throw it 70 yards down the field. But he's going to make five or six little thing decisions, little plays like that, running with his feet, getting a guy offside, throwing a back shoulder, making a check down. That is what the stability that Joe Burrow has brought to this LSU program. On the ground, Chris Curry. He'll get a yard and he'll bring up third and four. What I love about Burrow is sort of a no-nonsense, simple guy. Everybody's talking about the play against Miami where he checked out him at the line of scrimmage. And he said, look, it was a good play. I don't get the big deal. This is him talking. He said, there were more guys on the left, so I threw to the right. He's my kind of guy, Reese. <laughs> No technology, terminology, mumbo jumbo. I think he understood who, who he was talking to oh. when he was talking to you, and he kind of dumbed it down. You were in the room, too. <laughs> so was McShay. I just like, you know, he's a little quirky. He wears one sock inside out, you know, and that's kind of, I thought that's yeah. what you were going to say, what you liked about him most. Uh, uh, that really bothers me, actually. But he's on the run now. We'll check his socks after the play. Forced out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Joe Burrow, he's a running quarterback. 26 rushes on the season coming into tonight. Gets 14 yards on the play there, and he is the Tigers' leading rusher. And that's his third rush of this game, and you see when you're able to run and have the, the halfback be your lead blocker, the game one on the defense. And now he looks to throw. Softening up the middle, and it was there. There is a flag down. Jacquez Jones. Looking like the guilty party. Well, I love the way that Steve Ensminger is calling this football game, running the ball with authority, and then on first down, taking shots down the field. Pass interference, defense number 10. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. Trying to get the ball to Steven Sullivan, who's 6'7", 230 pounds. Going right down the middle of the field, and Jacquez Jones gets his hands on him, and when the ball's in the air, that's a very clear penalty. You just can't do that. But Steve Ensminger has got it working in all areas so far in this football game. 102 yards rushing, 102 yards passing for LSU. That's what I call a balanced offense. Here's Nick Brissett. He's tripped up at the line of scrimmage and doesn't get back there. Bring up second and ten or second and eleven. Kadir Shepard, a junior from the Bronx, able to trip him up. Again, this all started because of the fourth and one. The hard count getting Ole Miss offside. Now they're inside the red zone on second and ten. Burrow to throw for it. 
Heavy contact, easy flags fly. Julius on the coverage, too much. I'm not sure what technique they're coaching at Ole Miss with these corners. I mean, they're tackling receivers, and it's it's an easy call. Julius is all over Anderson. I mean, Pass interference, defense number 26. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, that's the um, badly beaten technique. I got to try something. Well, he, wa he wasn't badly beaten. It wasn't like he was two yards beyond him. He was running right next to him. He just had his hands all over. He was assaulting him. Seventh penalty on Ole Miss. Just under 10 minutes to play in the second quarter. I would continue to throw that ball out there based on, on what's happened already. You've had a touchdown on a uh, back shoulder throw, and you've had two penalties on corners. On the ground, the set already has one rushing touchdown. Not going to get there that time. Sonogo in the middle makes the stop. This is the area of the field where LSU has really liked the Wildcat. And they, they take Joe Burrow out and put him as a wide receiver. And Ed Ogeron lets his big, big fellas come off the line of scrimmage. And they've been using predominantly Clyde Edwards Alaire, number 22. And that's what you're going to get right here. 22, the running back. Had a wide open man to his right, and it lets to stay on the ground. Did he get there? There is a flag down. Clyde Edwards Elaire had many, many options there. Offside, defense, that's going to lead us to climb. There's all the plays, a touchdown. And there you have it. Great individual effort from Edwards Alaire. That's why they love him down there inside the five yard line. But he doesn't love to throw the ball. You see, Joe Burrow up here is nobody covering him. But I guarantee you, when you put a halfback at the quarterback, they're not seeing the field. All they're seeing is the football and the hole they have to hit. A great effort from Edwards Alaire. See, Vernon Dasher trying to drag down Edwards Alaire and just wasn't strong enough. So after the missed field goal, Three possessions, three touchdowns for the Tigers. They open up a 20 to three lead. Tracy on for the extra point. Boots it through, 8.59 left in the half. 21-3 Tigers. Well, I know everybody in the, the LSU faithful nation gonna say, yeah, but, right? This is Ole Miss defense. Yeah, I get it, it's Ole Miss defense. But you see signs of life with this LSU offense. Smart decisions by the quarterback and hard running inside the five yard line for the touchdown. ESPN College Football, brought to you by eBay. If it's happening on game day, it's happening on eBay. Get all your favorite Death Valley gear for the best price with free shipping on eBay. Fill your cart with color. Billy Cannon's Halloween run is one of the most famous plays in college football history. This week, LSU added a statue of Billy Cannon to outside Tiger Stadium. 1959, the Heisman Trophy winner. That was the only touchdown of that game. And he's the only Heisman Trophy winner in LSU history. Wow. That's amazing, right? That is They've amazing. So many great players here over the years in their 125th year of playing collegiate football. Could you imagine this place on a Halloween night? Right. <laughs> right. If it's not sick enough on a regular Saturday, <laughs> throw Halloween into the mix. Sure, why wouldn't you? 21-3, the fifth-ranked Tigers. An old Miss in desperate need of a spark. Starting from their own 25. Jordan Damu to throw. Down the sideline, taking a big shot. DeMarcus Lodge was there. Excellent coverage. Christian Fulton got a hand in there to knock it away. Well, you talk about get, getting a spark, and they got to get the spark by the thing they do best, which is running downfield. This time, the shot to DeMarcus Lodge. Look at that throw. I mean, you can't walk that ball out there any better. The only thing better than that throw was the coverage from Christian Fulton. See the numbers on Tamu. They are ugly. 
three of 12. Tamu to throw again, tipped, and falls to the turf. A.J. Brown off his fingertips, could not haul it in. Yeah, the, the numbers look terrible for Jordan Tamu, but he's had four drops already in this football game. These receivers, everybody talks. You give yourself a name, the yes. NWO, right? Yeah. Back it up when you come on the road in a hostile environment. you got to play your best if you're going to talk like that, and so far they haven't been able to do it. Well, where's that belt right now? It should stay in the box if somebody makes a big play for the quarterback. Tom will gets the pressure. And he'll just throw it away. All missile after punt. Take a look at the drop, Steve. I mean, it's been, there were three on this drive. Should have been a touchdown to Demarcus Lodge on the third drop. This was a drop from Metcalf. AJ Brown's had a drop. This was a drop from Lodge. I mean, this is just not the standard that these wide receivers have set for themselves. And if they're going to compete in this game on the road, they got to make those plays. It's pure and simple. And it's wet, yes, but LSU's receivers are catching the ball. Today. Yeah. Excellent pressure. Able to get it away from the 26. Jonte Kirkland on the short return. Tomorrow, kickoff your day with NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Each week, Randy Moss will rank this week's best catches from college football. He's not watching this game. Not, not on the old not, not the old. This uh, the is old this Miss is more for the you yeah. had one job. Right. And then Tuesday night, 8 Eastern, we'll have a National League wild card game for you. The baseball races have been wild. I was just thinking Thaddeus Moss is a tight end on LSU. Speaking of Randy, our colleague, probably watching tonight. The Tigers will take over. On first down and 10. Scored touchdowns their last three possessions. Conversely, Ole Miss has gone three and out on their last three possessions. On the ground, some heavy hitting. Edwards Elair is clocked by C.J. Miller. This and offensive the line is coming off the ball, Steve. It's been impressive. You know, this, we didn't quite know how this offensive line was going to come together. We mentioned Cushenberry, the center in the middle. Now you see the true freshman, Chasen Hines, at left guard 57 there. He's 340 pounds. He's been injured uh, this week a little bit, so not 100 percent, but getting some meaningful snaps. Second and six, Burrow on a throw. Lost one, man fell down in coverage. It's Justin Jefferson down the sideline for the score. 65 yards, another touchdown for the Tigers. Fourth consecutive touchdown for LSU. Tracy boots through the extra point. It's 28 to 3. You get the run game going, and we talked about it. The passing game down the field comes off in the play action. This is just Jordan Jefferson in this defense trying, trying to come off, falls down, slips. There's nobody left. And this is a reoccurring theme for Ole Miss defensively. Coach O told us. Uh, yesterday we talked and he said, listen, we have to be better throwing the ball on first down. And if you can run it, you can run that play action off first down. And they've gotten big chunks in this game so far. You know, it's been over a decade since Coach Ogeron was the head man at Ole Miss. His record there, just 10 and 25. But he's no longer carrying around that disappointment. I had a great opportunity at Ole Miss, and I'm very grateful for the Ole Miss people hiring me and taking a chance, but I didn't get the job done. You know, I used to stop at the uh, Exxon and get a chicken on a stick, and it was fantastic. That's about all I remember. 
Can you get me the chicken on a stick, please? Listen, I got you. Jambalaya, <laughs> etouffee, we had redfish, we had it all. I'm not going chicken on a stick. Chicken on a stick at a gas station <laughs> should be easy. That sounds more like McShay's. <laughs> Check it with Todd shortly. 28-3, LSU. And Elijah Moore won't have a chance to return that. Think about Coach O. This is the sixth time he has coached in the LSU Ole Miss game. Right. And Ole Miss is 0 5. Back then, he's <laughs> been on both sides of those. And things are working out. You do feel good for a guy like this. He seems to be so popular. He must be great in the living room. He's great in the locker room. And now they're having unbelievable success. Listen, everybody again. loves Coach O, right? Everybody around the country loves Coach O. The people here certainly love Coach O. Uh, the question is, would he be able to get the coaches around him, offensive and defensive coordinators, to begin to change the narrative, especially on the offensive side? And could have been a better start to this game for LSU. Scotty Phillips, the ball carrier for Ole Miss. And that's one thing that Ogeron has in common with Matt Luke. They are both coaching in their dream jobs, right? He's a, he's a lifelong rebel. He's a lifelong tiger. And you really feel good for these two good guys. You root for them. Both have come from the programs in tough situations. That might be an interception there by Fulton. Fulton. Yeah. Ball. Ty goes to the receiver. Battling with Metcalf. Go. Don't let go. You can hear him on the field. Don't let go. But of Lodge, he was fighting with Demarcus Lodge. It looked like it looked like Fulton had it. Steve and Lodge pulled it away from him. Strong hands win. Just the fourth catch by a wide receiver tonight. He had plenty of opportunities. Scotty Phillips on third and one. He's very close. I don't think he got there. Michael DeVinti made sure he did not get to that 35. And it looks like it's going to be fourth down. I think Matt Luke is going to go for it here. He's got to get something going. I don't necessarily agree with this because you haven't been able to stop LSU offensively at all. So if you don't get the first down, it'll be 35-3 in two minutes. This might be the ball game here. They're gonna punt. Now they're going to drop back and punt. Here's Mac Brown. Fourth consecutive three and out for Ole Miss. They're going to be wearing out their defense, too. Jonathan Giles. Back forward signaling for the fair catch. At the 21 yard line. It's a 45 yard punt. LSU with a 25 point lead and the football under six to play and a half. All right, Adnan, thank you. Keep us posted. Lots of interest there. Give it to Steven Sullivan. Turns the corner and has first down yardage. Well, they're playing tonight for the Magnolia Bowl trophy, and that's not it. <laughs> that's the 1958 that? National Championship oh. trophy. I don't I like think that. was Dr. Pepper around in 1958, but maybe it was. Of course it was. And they're actually after selling. the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh. Defense number three. The penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. Includes an automatic first down. Vernon that is Dasher. number three. First unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Foster Moreau. Yeah, that's just unnecessary. You're getting blocked, bud. You're getting blocked. That's what the uh, tight end is supposed to do. He's doing his job. And you might not like it, but you can't just take a swipe across the face. Frustration has to set in for Ole Miss. They did not expect to be in a 25 point hole in the second quarter. Burrow to throw. Gets the pressure. Able to get rid of it. Go wide open. Racy McMahon. And he's got the first down. It's all clicking for Burrow and LSU tonight. He just has a knack, you know, to extend plays. He's going to make the safe throw. If something's not there, he's going to throw it away. And that time, it was very clear if he could just buy a little bit more time, uh, he could get that ball down the field. Look at those numbers, 11 of 14, almost 200 yards and two touchdowns. And the most important, 
he continues without an interception this entire season. There's an injured player down. It's Kadir Shepard. The junior from the Bronx. Needing a moment to get himself together. And this Ole Miss defense, you know, we, we've been talking about their struggles, the tackling. Certainly they got outclassed against Alabama, but they haven't played well all year. And Matt Luke understands. And I asked him yesterday, I said, you know, I look back, coach, at 2016 where you freeze that class. That they got so many great players on the offensive side. They didn't get a lot of players defensively. They had 25 recruits, and 16 of them were on the offensive side, and only nine of them came on the defensive side, only seven of which are still on the team. So I think this team has a dearth of talent defensively on top of their inability schematically and tactically. That's all those things have come together uh, this season in particular for them defensively. Wesley McGriff said of tackling their mental errors well, that's on us as a coaching staff they were giving them giving them too much all sorts of issues that's going to come back i think it's holding on lsu well, i think the philosophy too from hugh freeze was listen we're just going to score more points than the other team and they didn't pay attention to defense. holding on the offense number 76 10 yard penalty for the previous spot okay first down that's austin deculus and that's the first penalty tonight against LSU. Mississippi has been penalized eight times for 71 yards tonight. First time the flag on LSU and some of the mistakes. Said so with 27 last game, we're obviously keeping a count tonight. They're up to 11, the under five to play in the first half. 27 missed tackles, Coach Luke told us, against Kent State last week. But that goes against LSU. Here's Burrow able to get outside. And throw on the run, incomplete. Derek Dillon couldn't bring it down. Second and twenty. So he's, he's got a he's got a job on his hands here. Matt Luke understands he's got a lot of talent on offense. Now they're not playing very well on either side of the football here tonight, but he understands that in order for this team to get better and compete in the SEC, it's got to start on this defensive side. These guys have got to find a way to play more consistent football. Now quickly things can change right Ole Miss they're only a few years removed from consecutive New Year's Six Bowls and a win in the Sugar Bowl. Of course they're dealing with a bowl ban this season for the last season. There's Ball the ball carrier smartly out of bounds. I love this little wrinkle from Steve Ensminger. He's got a quarterback he's not a big physical runner he's not a fast runner but he is serviceable and he's just had this little wrinkle where you're going to have the halfback be the lead blocker, and that's going to give you the numbers advantage offensively and very smart football from, from Ensminger. Todd, just checking, is it raining down there? Yep. <laughs> Thank you. He's a man of few words. Great analysis. <laughs> Burrow rushing five carries for 51 yards. Deculus is out. There's only a few raindrops on his shoulders. Light sprinkle. I don't think the heavy stuff's going to come down for a while. Big shame. We got whistles on third and twelve. Part of the snap, delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. I want to know how those designer shoes are holding up for McShay down there. Who wears shoes on the field to a game like this? Designer I shoes. I had my son in town, first college football game. A little oh. preoccupied. I didn't think about it. It was my. It was a mental error. Oh mental my error. Unforced mental. Unforced. Those look expensive. Too, real by expensive. The way. <laughs> well, they, they used to be. I love you guys. There's a trash can on the way out of the stadium, Todd. Somebody get that man some flip flops. <laughs> You're a long way from Nantucket, my friend. <laughs> Third and 17. Oh, <laughs> gets the pressure. They're going to get him. And the football comes out. Ole Miss needs a break. Let's see if they get it. Ross Donnelly had the hit and knocked it free on Burrow. Somebody had to make a football play defensively for Ole Miss, and it's Ross Donnelly. He's going to come right up the middle. Joe Burrow holds on to this ball a little bit too long. He pushes Damian Lewis right back, and not only does he get the sack, but he gets the fumble, and Charles Wiley pounces on it for the turnover. And there is a flag down. See if there's a face mask 
I think Donnelly, as he was throwing Burrow to the turf, got his face mask too. Prior to the change of possession, oh. the personal foul, face mask, number 90 on the defense. That too would be enforced in a spot where the ball was lost possession. Automatic first down. Wow. That kind of night for Ole Miss. When it rains, it pours, right? For Ole Miss, I mean, you get the turnover that you needed to get a little bit of a spark. Let's take a look and see if Donnelly's hand, yep, just grabs a little bit of the face mask, and that's the right call. A little bit, yeah. Got the full face. That's a good call by the officials. And that's not intentional from, from Donnelly. You, you're trying to do anything you can. You're getting blown out here, and you're trying to get a fumble, get a sack, and your, your hand inadvertently gets up on the face mask, and just bad luck. Ole Miss has 86 yards and penalties tonight. That's 20 more yards than they have of offense. So well, that's a big surprise because we you, you knew this offense could, could score points. I think you've got to give credit not only to LSU's offense, but their defense has come to play tonight. Marty Aronoff on top of his game this evening. And Ben Boma appreciates the numbers on the helmets for LSU, our spotter. LSU making it easier as they honor their national championship team. I like them. Wearing those 1958 style helmets with the uniform numbers on them. That's Edwards Alaire for a couple. Edwards Wind down towards three minutes remaining in the half. 28 to 3 LSU. Tiger's going to go fast, a little tempo here. Why wouldn't they? More to throw, looking left and throwing that way, completing to Stephen Sullivan. And he has first down yardage. Yeah, we, we can't use the weather as an excuse, as McShay mentioned. LSU's making all the catches. They're wide receivers. They're not dropping footballs tonight. Steve, the weather is never an excuse. It's Burrow on the ground. The ball comes out. The ball comes out. Let's see if Ole Miss got this one. C.J. Miller was right there. Mohamed Sanogo knocked the ball free. And there are no flags on the field this time. And Joe Burrow trying to get a few extra yards right in the middle of the field, and the Ole Miss defense makes him pay. Big hit and the recovery from Miller. Ole Miss will have the opportunity. So Burrow's fumbled a couple times now this drive. The last one will stick as he takes one, too. All right, we'll see you then, and then thank you. Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the best student section of the year. The LSU Tigers student section already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Ta'amu throwing. Sales won the DK Metcalf, and he hauls that one in. That's his first catch for the star wide receiver. <laughs> And there's an injured Tiger on the field. It's Kerry Vincent. Yeah, Kerry Vincent got a block from A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown's 230 pounds, Steve. And he's been known to target certain uh, defenders. Here he is right here. And that's a clean hit. That's a clean hit from A.J. Brown. Kerry Vincent, you should know better because that guy, number one, has been doing that to defenders for three years. He is a physical specimen, and he's hearing about it from the Tigers. Grant Delpit giving him an earful. Top of your screen there to the right. Yep. And again, by definition, uh, Kerry Vincent there is a defenseless player, but uh, that was a clean hit. First, first down for Ole Miss since four minutes into the first quarter. They have to get a touchdown here before halftime, Steve. Four consecutive three and outs. Tamu throwing, and it's A.J. Brown. And let's see if the Tigers' defense keep their heads cool. There's a little yep. bump after the play. There, there's no question, and it's going to start with Devin White and Grant Delpit. Now they have number one in red in their sights. So if he's going to, he better have his head on a swivel on this drive. Brown's got three grabs for only 14 yards. 
for second and four. Cobb, who feels the pressure, trying to get out of there. And Chase throws, and it falls incomplete. Metcalf could not get there. Delpit was on him. Steve, these receivers for Ole Miss are not doing a very good job of uncovering. When the play breaks down, there's the scramble rule, right? You got to find a way to get open. None of these guys are getting open. You got two guys over here on the sideline. They're not spacing out. You have to push up and then come back to the quarterback. They clearly have not practiced that scramble rule. This feels like a big play for Ole Miss with a minute 50 to go in the half. Gonna get there. Just back to the line of scrimmage. Gonna bring up fourth down. Ray Thornton made sure to Amu couldn't make it. Ole Miss is now just one for seven on third down conversions. I think Matt Luke here is gonna let this clock run down and then he's gonna call a timeout to make a decision whether he wants to go for it here. You're in a tough spot. You need some points before halftime. You got to get back in this football game. Adnan, if you can hear me, take it away. Timeout. During the dead ball period, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense number 29. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's number 29's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. 29's Greedy Williams. That's huge, Steve. It's a fourth down, and, and Matt Luke had a decision that he needed to make. And when there's a dead ball here, and Greedy Williams, I know they've been jawing back and forth with A.J. Brown, but you got to be smart. You're one of the veteran leaders on this team. And he's at the top of the screen here. He's talking, he's talking to Matt Luke right there. He's over there talking to the old Miss sideline. But you got no business being yeah. over there talking to them. There's nothing good gonna come out of that. Get out of there. That allows Ole Miss to move across midfield. 61 seconds left. Tom who makes the throw and A.J. Brown the grab. And again, anytime uh, A.J. Brown is involved, we'll, we'll watch for extracurriculars from LSU. Well, now, if, I'm, if I'm Jordan Tom who right now, I'm going to take a shot on Greedy Williams. I don't know where his head is. Exactly. Your coach is yelling at him over there, and you got Metcalf lined up on him at the top of the screen. Tom who able to complete. It's Dawson Knox, the tight end, his first catch. Ole Miss has one timeout remaining, 50 seconds left. The first down stops the clock. They'll move the sticks. <laughs> Dabu's ball is right on the money to Demarcus Lodge for first down yardage. 35 seconds left. In the half. Yeah, and LSU now is allowing Tamu and these receivers to get back into a little bit of rhythm. They have been completely out of rhythm throughout the course of this first half. But this two minute drive might just get them back into the football game. Down to the 24, late add onto the field by the LSU defense. And they'll call timeout. Well, they had 12 guys. Timeout, LSU. Todd Harris was running out of the field late. Dave Rand is going to lay into those guys, 12 guys on the field. They've kind of lost their focus. That hit from A.J. Brown completely changed the complexion of the relationship between LSU's defense and this offense, and, and they've got to get back to where they were attacking this offense earlier in this, in this half. And a bit of a disturbing trend for LSU. They've had these kind of big leads, like 28-3, and, well, they haven't lost. They have seen them disappear. Remember, they led Miami 33-3 before winning 33-17. They were down 10-0. They had a 10-0 lead against Auburn, then trailed by 11, came back to, to win there. They were up 24-0 last week, 
and really had to hang on to win 38 21 against Louisiana Tech so they've seen these big leads and wind up in close games in the fourth quarter really for no reason so that's something that has to be a, a focus here tonight it's a mindset it's a mindset that starts with the head coach goes through the the two coordinators and certainly you do not want to allow this old Miss team especially this offense which can be very explosive to hang around here in this football game a penalty aided drive for Ole Miss has them at the 24 with 35 seconds left Rebels have one timeout man to man coverage Tommy the pump here's the goal part of it and there's all sorts of contact and flags come in Katie Metcalf and Greedy Williams got tied up. Well, it looked like Metcalf pushed Greedy Williams down. Williams had turned around, was looking for the football. It's very difficult to call pass interference when pass he does interference, that. Pass interference, offense number 14. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. I think first down. I think that's the good call. It's the right call. You get the, the official is going to give the defensive back the benefit of the doubt when he looks back for the football and Greedy Williams is so confident in his ability that he's able to turn around and know that he's still in phase with the receiver and that's a well done Metcalf is a guy who is so confident he wants the other team's best defensive back on him he's getting it to Greedy Williams tonight 10th penalty 100 penalty yards taken away from Ole Miss tonight and we're not even at halftime yet. Heading that way. Tamu throws it. Battle for the football. And A.J. Brown wins that battle on Terrence Alexander. And comes down inside the five. You continue to throw the ball up to these big wideouts. And that's, a, that's not a bad strategy because they've t proven time and again that they can come down. And this time it's A.J. Brown. That's just a hope throw there from Jordan Tamu. And A.J. Brown makes it right. 35 yards. The receivers making plays they weren't making in the first quarter. 19 seconds left. Tamu throws for the end zone and it's knocked away. Again, it's Greedy Williams on DK Metcalf. It was there and he couldn't haul it in. So interesting to watch Greedy Williams. He's not the biggest guy you see. He's kind of slight of Bill, but he's six foot three, 184 pounds. He gives away. 40 pounds to DK Metcalf, but he has no issues mixing it up and being physical in coverage. Calvin gonna run for it. He's tripped up at the goal line. He's just short of the goal line with nine seconds left. And Ole Miss is so fortunate they had one timeout left in the bank. Big time play here from Rashard Lawrence, number 90. If he doesn't get the legs of Tamu, this ball is in the end zone. Looked like that ball may have come out, but he clearly recovered it. We'll bring up a decision here for Matt Luke with nine seconds and a timeout. You can still have everything in your arsenal running the football. Ten plays, 90 yards on this drive. Nine seconds to play. Third and goal upcoming from inside the one. No timeouts remaining for Ole Miss. Okay, yeah, they just called their last time out there, so. Well, you want to throw something quick. It's either a touchdown or an incompletion. Two cracks at this, for sure. Andre Anthony running out of the field late. A late substitution again for LSU's defense. Trying to stay in this ball game before halftime. Fake of the throw. Too tall for Octavius Cooley, and the official goes down. Five seconds left. It's Willie Huff, the umpire, who appears to be shaken up, and it's fourth down. That's the third time tonight, guys, that he has been in the, in the way of a play, the umpire. He's been knocked down three separate occasions. 
Uh, if he wasn't there, that might have been a catch. I mean, that's we want to talk about the luck for Ole Miss. They have been snake bit in this game. Just bad luck and bad position there. Grace, you kicking a field goal here? With, you five, with five seconds left from inside the one. You got to get some points on the board. What say you, Luke Logan? You'll never kick a shorter field goal. That from 17 yards away. You make it 28 to 6. Really? Well, give credit to Rashard Lawrence there. You know, that tackle on Tamu just saved four points and, and a little bit of momentum for LSU. Come on, I'll give you a chance to change your mind on that. Yeah, I'm kicking a field goal. I told you the first no, time. No, except change your mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gonna give you a chance there. <laughs> you had nothing. You've had no momentum. You've had been snake bit all all game for Matt Luke. You had to get something positive before half. Yeah, how about a touchdown? Something positive. Listen, you know, if you're at the five, it's fine. They're inside the one yard line trying to win this game. I understand. I understand. You go now you're down 22. Okay. Yeah. It's a three score game. So yeah. I'm an aggressive play caller, you know. <laughs> I would take a shot. That's why you're up here. <laughs> really you don't think I have a future in coaching then, huh? What a first half from LSU. I mean, I get it that yeah. that Ole Miss really has struggled coming into this game, but uh, their defense has been outstanding. Outside of that last drive there, they have really controlled the line of scrimmage and not allowed A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf to do much of anything. D.K. Metcalf has been taken out of this game completely, and he's the most explosive player on Ole Miss's team. And again, keep in mind on that that 90 yard drive. Greatly aided by the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty to keep the drive going. And they still have to settle for the field goal. Two seconds left and a half. And the fair catch. In the 23. Should get one more snap in here. Send you off to halftime. Where Adnan not so patiently awaits. We understand there are a couple other rather important college football games going on in the country tonight. Fellows to get you all set. Joe Burrow, what? I mean, I can't imagine that first half going any better for Joe Burrow and LSU. And they will take a 28 to 6 lead. The Tigers will with them to the half. And they'll get the football to start the second half. Send you back to Adnan Burke, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer in the studio. Gentlemen, take it away. You're watching the SEC on ESPN, presented by Geico. Getting set for a third quarter action. Here on a raising, rainy night in Louisiana, 28 to 6. The fifth ranked Tigers leading the Rebels of Ole Miss. And LSU will get the football to start the half. Steve Lee with Brian Greasy, a soggy Todd McShay shortly from the field. 28 6, that's pretty much indicative of how the first half went. It was all LSU. It certainly was. I think LSU came out offensively, 332 yards uh, in the first half. They did it on the ground through the air. And then their defense was really impressive. That was the marquee matchup that we wanted to see. This Ole Miss unit of wide receivers in Jordan Ta'amu against LSU's DBU. And so far, it's been all LSU. Ole Miss was plagued by drops in that first half. And heavy penalty issues as well. Take a look at our Corona premier moment or moments. Yeah, it was all about Joe Burrow in the first half. I'm really impressed with his decision making. We talked about it with Todd. Is identifying the defense. Three defenders on one side of the ball. Four offensive players. That clearly tells Joe Burrow I need to audible out of this and get to the right play call. He puts Edwards Alaire in a perfect situation and they gash Ole Miss offensively up front. That's well done by a quarterback. Those things go unnoticed in the stat chart, but certainly not from the coaching staff. And then he's attacked downfield. We've got playmakers at the wide receiver position that have helped him out, but certainly he's been on target. And on first down, Burrow comes out throwing. Down the middle of the field, off the fingertips of Jalen Julius, and Burrow took a shot. And he's slow to get up. He got planted. 
This ball should have gone to 17 on the wheel route right there. He throws in a double coverage. He had a wide open receiver outside, Todd. I'm standing about 25 years, 25 years, 25 yards from that hit, and that's the loudest noise I've heard all night. He just got pile drived into the ground. That's exactly what they're trying to get out of the NFL game. They don't have exactly. the same rule in college, but that's why they're you don't get as protected in college as you do in the NFL. Josiah Cody goes 316 pounds. The junior from Douglasville, Georgia, landing on top of Burrow. Throw set the ball carrier and Cody got him too. Josiah Cody's a big man, 6'4, 316, that defensive tackle position. Yeah, and that, that, that hit just right, been there, it takes your breath away, right? When that shoulder pad comes down right in your diaphragm, uh, it's it's hard to get your breath. And to show Burrow right now. I always told my offensive coordinator, look, if you see me get hit like that, please call the running play on the next snap. Like, don't ask me to drop right. back. What, and what's the signal for that, Grease? What do you do? Like, <laughs> grab my chest. Well, and if they're not paying attention, they might not see that. <laughs> that's when you grab in your chest. That's when you take matters in your own hands. I audibled out of that yes. play. Yes. Incomplete. Looking for Stefan Sullivan. <laughs> All right, let me put you in this situation. Yeah. Maybe you're, you're Joe Burrow right here. Okay. Tell me how you think this feels. I mean, oh. <laughs> not ideal, I would say. That ground does not give. And in the end, what hurts probably more is the first three and out of the night for Joe Burrow and LSU. They'll have some time to figure things out and catch their breath. Zach Literally. Von Rosenberg will kick it away. Catch some breath. Yeah. Got some pressure, and there's contact on the punter. Tylen Knight. Tylen Knight came in and made contact, ran right into Von Rosenberg. This will be a first down no matter what. Yeah, running into the kicker. There's fourth and four there. Can he get a piece of this ball? He may have. Ooh, the left hand, the fingertips, yeah. baby. And of course, if you make contact with the ball, that wipes yeah. out the roughing penalty. Uh, yeah, so that might be something they want to take a look at. If it stands, it's the 11th penalty on Ole Miss, the sixth for a first down. Boy, those are so hard to see because it's happening so fast. That ball is moving so fast, and it's hard to see if there's any change in the rotation of the ball. Very close. Ball is out to the 46-yard line. And so Burrow doesn't have a chance to catch his breath. <laughs> the pitch to Brosette. Somebody else takes some contact. And Brosette gets up shy of the 50. JV and Hamilton made the tackle. I think you're going to see a lot of this from LSU in the second half. Steve Ensminger is going to come out and he's going to pound the football. He's going to test the metal of this whole Miss defense. How much do they really want to play in this 28 6 game in the second half? See the fullback is in, tight end is in. This is old school LSU football. Bro set. Short of the marker, bring down a real big third and short. Here's Adnan. Point game, 90 seconds left there. It's Brosette has first down yardage back here for the Tigers. They'll continue to drive. And if I'm Steve Ensminger, I'm I'm testing my quarterback right here. I'm going to test his limits. I'm going to see what he can do, especially in the run game. I'm not going to come out and be wild and throw it all over the place, but I'm going to give him two run plays on every single uh, snap in the huddle, and I'm going to make sure that he gets us in the ideal look to run the football every single time. Pitch, a little trickeration. Justin Jefferson winds up with it. With Burrow in front of him. Burrow provides the block for Jefferson. And then the big hit out of bounds. Well after the fact, draws the flags. Cavante Ruggs, I think, hurt himself. He is still down on the sideline. 
Great block by Burrow, as you mentioned, and Rhodes. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, defense number 27. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That's Kevonte Ruggs, the true freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. And he's the guilty party hitting Jefferson laid out of bounds. That's not even close. Boy, he, he hit him with the crown of the helmet, too. And that's why he's still down on, on the ground. This is why they're trying to get crown of the helmet out of out of football at the college level. Watch his head go down right there. That's that is very dangerous. I know it's micro fractions between the face mask and the crown of the helmet, but he's lucky. It was a dead ball without targeting. The previous play is under review. Yep. So now they will look at the targeting. Absolutely. Among the many dangerous things there on Justin Jefferson, you could see him relax and really exhale figuring the play was over and then all of a sudden he right. wasn't here wasn't. came the contact but this rule is to protect the defensive player and in this case it's rugs after further review the late hit out of bounds was targeting this number 27 of the defense by rule number 27 is just part five for the ball game unfortunately dead ball penalty will remain half the to the goal Automatic first down. Kevante Ruggs has been ejected, the freshman from Montgomery. And that's absolutely the right call. And, and it's, you take a look at it, he, he grabs his neck right after he gets up, and that's to protect him. You can't use the crown of the helmet. That's a great teaching opportunity for not only Ole Miss defensively and, and Ruggs, but anybody playing football. This is what they're trying to prevent. And again, it's the crown of the helmet, so it has nothing to do with head or neck area or or a defenseless receiver or runner. This has everything to do with the posture and the crown of that helmet and that head being down. Very, very lucky Vontae Ruggs didn't have a serious injury right there. When you hit with the crown right, it doesn't matter where you make the contact. And the ejection for Ruggs. Linebacker's been a huge problem for Ole Miss the last few years. Fumble, ball comes out, and it is picked up and recovered by Cedric Woods. It's Kadir Shepard that came off the end of the line of scrimmage and forced, he was unblocked and forced that fumble. Matt Luke said, listen, he probably challenged him at halftime. Come out in the first half, uh, second half and do something defensively. Show that you came to fight in the second half. And nice job by Kadir Shepard, forcing the turnover. And you could see Woods was really close to picking that up and trying to run and take that the distance. I'm standing right behind where the defense was. They, they had a tendency there pre-snap because they were all pointing to go to the left. Second red zone turnover of the night by LSU. Not the score could be worse for Ole Miss. But we'll see what the Rebels can do after the turnover. Now we'll see if this, this rain continues. It's kind of steady. Can this Ole Miss offense get the passing game going? They'll start with the run, and Scotty Phillips stays on his feet, has first down yardage, and plenty more. He's been the biggest surprise of this offense for Ole Miss. He's at three 100 yard rushing games. He's got 20 there. You know, Jordan Wilkins leaves yeah. a year ago, a thousand yard rusher. And they really didn't have anyone in the backfield that they could count on. And they got very lucky that Scotty Phillips transferred in. Yeah. Elijah Moore on the receiving end. It'll be interesting to see if Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator here for Ole Miss, kind of goes back to uh, his regular game plan, which is this RPO system, which is a little bit different, Steve, than other uh, systems. Yeah. It is Phillips. And the difference is they don't read the defense. Is that and look for oh, look for green grass? Is exactly. what told they, don't, they don't ask that. There's Phil Longo. He doesn't ask Jordan Tamu to read defenders and how they drop. He wants them. He wants Tamu to go through his progression. And he's just looking to see if, if guys are open. And if they're open, he'll throw them to him. He doesn't really look at the defense, which is completely uh, foreign to me the way I was taught how to play quarterback. But very interesting as to how Longo teaches his quarterbacks. LSU has taken a timeout, gives us an opportunity to check back in with Adnan.
An impressive comeback there, certainly for Ohio State on the road. We welcome those you've been watching. Ohio State, Penn State over on ABC. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Todd McShay on a rainy night in Louisiana. The Tigers right now having their way with Ole Miss as we show you the top ten heading into this week five. Start crossing people out, Grease. Well, how about oh, this win yeah. right here? Notre Dame, that's going to be big over uh, number seven, Stanford, and LSU at number five. Do you believe that LSU is the fifth-ranked team in the country? Are you asking me? For, like, yeah. Yes, absolutely, I do. Yeah, okay. They could test that Florida next week after the Gators won earlier tonight on ESPN. Damu throwing down the sideline to Marcus Lodge. Is there any chance he was in bounds to make that catch? No way. Those college football rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Are you in agreement about this LSU club? Does five feel right to you? Boy, I, you know, certainly the two big wins that they've had, the two top ten wins, and I know that we say he's clearly he's out of bounds there, but I know we say, okay, they had two top ten wins. Yeah. Well, Miami doesn't look like a top ten team, okay? Right. I don't put any stock in the preseason rankings. I know a lot of other people do. I do not. So okay. I just look at the teams, and Miami's not a top ten team. Okay. Auburn on the road, that was an impressive win for LSU, and they certainly have looked impressive again here tonight. Hunt gets away. John Tate. John Trey Kirkland is back and it'll bounce out of bounds. Under 10 to go. 28 to 6. The fans are braving the elements here. ESPN College Football brought to you by Mazda. Feel alive. And Burger King. Mix or match two of your favorites, including all new crispy chicken tenders, for just six bucks. Cole Tracy's family in California. This was the video of them watching Cole kick that game winning field goal, a 42 yard field goal against Auburn as time expired. The first walk off field goal in regulation in LSU history. And that too is mind-boggling. Check the flag. I think that's been the biggest change in this LSU team from a year ago is the kicker, believe it or not. Right. I mean, they were atrocious kicking the football a year ago, and he has been nearly perfect so far this year. Holding offense number 73. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. And he's uh picked up quite a following not just here I picked up a few things yes. too from what the you got tailgate. There? this yeah. is a uh, cold blooded can yeah. you read that what's it what's in that glass grease I'm a little concerned with you what it was you got a tailgate in there. what are you oh. doing I love that cup right it's yes. awesome this it's kid perfect. has been unbelievable so in his career I think if you add up the attendance of everyone who's watched him kick before there have been less people total than that are in the building here tonight with the announced attendance over a hundred thousand people. Cole Tracy was at Division II Assumption, which is in Worcester, Massachusetts. Their home attendance capacity was 1,500 people. That's unbelievable. 1,500. That's unbelievable. Well, and, and but he was so productive at Assumption, right? He's the leading active uh, among kickers in the number of field goals made at 76. Yes. So, I mean, he has certainly proven himself. And, we were asking Coach Orgeron about how he found him. He said it was all Greg McMahon, their new special teams coordinator, uh, who was a longtime special teams coordinator for the New Orleans Saints. And he said, listen, I told Greg, I need a graduate kicker to fix our kicking issues. So Greg McMahon went out there and said, listen, I don't care about stars, right? He's an NFL guy. They don't have stars in the NFL. So he went to Division II Assumption and found this kid and it has been unbelievable successful for, for LSU. Here's third and 24. I'll give you the kicker to the kicker story in a second, but it is amazing. They're just outside the five. So Pearl keep the drive alive to Leonard Fournette. Got some running room. They'll come up shy of the marker. So after Tracy hits the field goal against Auburn, LSU fans started sending checks for $42.36, 42-yard kick. Tracy's uniform number is 36. <laughs> sending checks of $42.36 to Assumption College in Worcester as a thank you gift. No, they didn't. 
this over ten thousand dollars have been wow. raised. <laughs> so I heard Assumption's going to put in a new scoreboard or something like that. So I love it. But they've got viewing parties in Massachusetts now and California, where he's from. I love the nickname Kick Tracy. That was my favorite. And, and how could that be the first walk-off in regulation in LSU history? It's amazing that hasn't happened before. But and by the way, he, he missed a field goal tonight. <laughs> All of that, and he missed a field goal <laughs> here tonight. Or else it'd be 31 to six. It's a 44 yard punt. Well, this defense has been important tonight, too. And simulated pressure is something that Dave Aranda loves to incorporate. What that is, is you're trying to get the offensive line to declare to a blitz look and then bring something at the snap that's very different. It messes, messes up the protections. Another example of it here to the field. They're trying to disguise Grant Delpit on this blitz. They do so. The back picks it up, but he still gets to the quarterback. These are the kinds of plays that Dave Aranda has employed time and time again. I think it's, I think it's interesting to, to note that now that they don't have Arden Key, they're doing more of this. And Dave Aranda was telling us, listen, I didn't. Right. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. It didn't make sense to do a lot of scheme when you had a guy like Arden Key. You kind of just down. let him come off. But now that he doesn't have this premier pass rusher, he's using more of these schemes. Again, we mentioned earlier he does not have Caleb on chase on, who is an outstanding pass rusher in his own right. Hurt his knee in the opener. Arguably the most gifted player on LSU. So they got to come up with some other ways. Get creative on that pressure. Try to get after the quarterback. Damu is running the football, and he's out beyond the 35-yard line. You know, Dave Aranda, to me, is one of the few guys that we meet with over and over again that really, I, I feel like I learned something, basically. And it was interesting, I thought, talking to Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator of Ole Miss, and he was saying, this is the hardest week of preparation every year when I go up against Aranda, because Aranda is, in my opinion, the best coordinator in the country. DK Metcalf went up to bring that down. Yeah, Todd, I think it's it's between Brent Venables and, and Dave Aranda. Those are the two guys that really continue to push the envelope and confuse defenses. I think it's really fascinating to see the relationship between Dave Aranda and Ed Orgeron. Because Orgeron, you know, as a defensive coach, you see a run up to middle from Scotty Phillips. Scotty Phillips, but as a defensive coach, you would imagine that he would go into the defensive meeting room and he would say, look, this is how we need to do it. That is not how it happens at LSU. <laughs> Dave Aranda is in control of everything. First down and 10. It's Phillips again. Oh. Able to get inside the 40. What I took away from the meeting with Aranda, Aranda was he said it was his day to sleep in yesterday, and that means 7 a.m. That's his sleep in day. He's usually in the office at 4.45 in the morning, and he's the third car there. What's your sleep-in day, Levy? About 11.15-ish. <laughs> Trying to get first down yardage. And DK Metcalf does. And if you're wondering who beats him, who are the two guys that beat him in the office before 4.45 a.m.? That's James Craig, the offensive line coach, and Craig McMahon, who you mentioned, the special teams coach. Yeah. Early bird gets the worm. That's what they say. Coach O, I bet it's not far behind. Tabu will launch one for the end zone. And Metcalf, looked like he was jagging, dragging Christian Fulton with him on the coverage. Metcalf has had a physical game. He really has not been productive at all. He's had a couple of drops, and now looks like he's a little bit gimpy. That ankle. Fulton's in a great position. Keep an eye on that right ankle. Oh, yeah, it looked like Fulton came down on the toe of Metcalf. His right foot gets caught underneath here. Oof. I tell you, as a receiver, and as a receiver as talented as, as Metcalf is, these kinds of, of injuries, foot injuries, you know, the, the Liz Franks, the, those things are really devastating. Uh, to wide receiver, so you hope that that this is nothing too serious for for DK. Got a couple likely first round picks, NFL talent, Metcalf down the road, and AJ Brown before him. Well, tomorrow, kick off your day with NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern. Hear what former Browns quarterback Johnny Manziel had to say to Baker Mayfield, who will make his first career start on Sunday, and then tomorrow night, the NBA is Whoa. back.
Le my Nuggets. LeBron James and his Lakers. They host your Nuggets. They'll play in San Diego tomorrow night. The uh, preseason debut for LeBron as an L.A. Laker. Still got to get used to that. Coverage tips off at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, you better watch out for my Nuggets. They're coming after me. You think but so? How really? my, but how about my Rockies? Yes. Rockies are a great story. Nate's going to expect a playoff ticket, is what I'm yeah, telling you. I know he is. Tom will throw it. Gets it out to A.J. Brown on the flat. Let's see if he had first down yardage. Well, now with no uh, D.K. Metcalf out there, Steve, it's going to flip the balance on this offense a little bit. A.J. Brown normally gets a little bit of protection from Metcalf because Metcalf draws a double team, and that allows A.J. Brown to work the middle of the field. But with no Metcalf in the game, now you can really focus on A.J. Brown. Greedy Williams has not been in the game for quite some time now as well. Shake it up. On third down and one, it's Phillips. He has first down yardage. Down to the 20-yard line. And here come the Rebels with six minutes to play in the third. Trailing in a three-score game, as you pointed out, as we approached halftime. I still would have gone for the touchdown, but that's me. Understood. Yeah. But you get a touchdown here, right? Yeah. Make it a two-score game. I'd take a shot with, with A.J. Brown right now in the slot. They like to keep it on the ground with Phillips. Crashes down inside the 20 to the 18. Glenn Logan made the stop. Phillips. Logan, a sophomore, dropped 40 pounds. Came to college eating pizza and drinking soda and switched to salads and waters. That's one way to lose 40 pounds. Why are you looking at me? I'm not going to try that. I'm going to try that. I just had the salad before the meal. <laughs> like the pizza. <laughs> this, what is this water you speak of? <laughs> Flag on the play. Snap infraction, number 50 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Snap infraction. You need a definition on that one? No, I'm good. Okay. 14th penalty against Ole Miss tonight. 14 penalties. How are you going to win a game on the road here with 14 penalties? Double-digit missed tackles. Right? Turnovers. I mean, that's, that'll drive you crazy if you're a hit coach. There's your recipe for a disaster. Tabu. See some green in front of him, able to turn the corner. Out at the 10, Kelvin Joseph forced him out. True freshman from right here at Baton Rouge. It's been a tough night for Jordan Tomlin. This is a heck of a football player. I feel like we really haven't you know, talked about him and his skill set because he, he really hasn't gotten anything going so far in this game. But I, I know you score here, and it's a two-score game. You never know what can happen. If I'm Jordan Tomlin, I am still focused on, on doing my job, not trying to force anything. Take what the defense gives you. That's Isaiah Woolyard to the left of Tomlin. And it is Woolyard. Inside the five, his first carry. True freshman, Hattiesburg. Oh, that umpire's having a rough go of it tonight. Wow. He's in the wrong place all the time. Wally Huff. Look at the stains on the back of his shirt. You know, he's been down on the ground. Looks like he's got a knee brace going. Looks like he's a player. He probably was a player. I mean, those umpires, that's that's the most difficult spot uh, to, to officiate. He's given a big sigh right there. We see a big fella. It's an injured player down. It's Kelvin Joseph who had the force out. He's down being attended to now. You can check out our Xfinity Skycam coverage of today's game, streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app and on Xfinity X1. And the only reason you can check it out is because our man Lean is oh, down yeah. there. He's taking care of you at home, making sure that lens is clear so you get a nice, crisp picture of this game. Wax on, wax off. Lane. Guys, I talked to old Miss representatives, and they said that DK Metcalf, the star wide receiver, had a right ankle injury. They looked at it, taped it up. He's back back on the field and he's going to play and they think he'll be fine. That's good news. That is good news. Could use him in this spot right now on first down and goal from the four. Where the legs of Jordan Tamu really come into play inside the five yard line. Ole Miss and Schiff. They got two tight ends out there. More motion. Quick throw to A.J. Brown trying to get him in some space. He'll cut in. See the signal. 
waiting for the indication, and there it is. Touchdown, Ole Miss. And the Rebels get their first touchdown of the game. This was a potential first round draft pick in A.J. Brown against a potential first round draft pick in Greedy Williams. Williams was chasing him to the corner and A.J. Brown who is a baseball player was drafted by the San Diego Padres looks like he was sliding into home there. Yeah. A couple two spot two sports stars here. There's Williams trying to get him out of bounds and slide around the catcher. Oh that ball looks like it came out of his hand. We got to take a look at this if that ball comes out of his hand through the outside the end zone. Yeah. Take a look at the well no that ball hits he has control of that ball it hits the pylon and by definition that's a touchdown. It doesn't come out of his control until after it hits the pylon which is across the goal line. If you fumble that out of the end zone. the field with a touchdown the previous play is under review. Let's we'll take a look. All right, while they take a look, we'll step out. Oops. And the call has been reversed. They'll take the points off the board and spot the ball at the one foot line. Yeah, it looks like his foot came down before the ball touched the pylon. Watch his right foot before the ball touches the pylon. It looks like it just. Hits the grass before the ball makes contact. Before the, the pylon, ball makes right. contact, yep. But he was in control of the football. In fact, the pylon knocked it out, but all none of that matters when the foot hits the out of bounds first. So it's second and goal. Three tight ends now from the one foot line. Handoff. Scotty Phillips. Not going to get there. There is a flag down. Devin White among a host of Tigers making the stop. Offside, defense number 46. Half the difference to the goal. Repeat second down. And the other good news for Ole Miss is DK Metcalf was back in the game for that play. I agree, but I don't think that they're going to throw a jump ball to DK Metcalf out there. They want to run this ball. In between the tackles with Scotty Phillips to punch it in. I like the zone read game because Jordan Tom, who's a big physical player, and he can run it in as well. 13th play of this drive coming. A whole lot of happenings to give the football to Phillips for the one yard score. Well, it looked like there was a lot going on there, in shift, yeah. but, but certainly it was meaningful, Steve, because they were in a zone read shotgun look, and they come up under center, which allows them to run the football with the power game coming off the line of scrimmage. Watch the hole and the push by this offensive line. Really nice hole for Phillips to get in the end zone. Extra point on the way, and it is good. It's a 15-point game with 345 left in the third quarter. It's a two score game I tell you 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 give me all kind of grief for yes. kicking the field goal at the end of the first so, half. The and way. this is exactly the reason why you kick the field goal but if Ole Miss is going to get back in this game they found their rhythm on offense but it really is about defense and it's about tackling the missed tackles in the first half double digits and so far they got to stop. On the first drive, LSU came out in the second half, but in order for them to get back in this game, they're going to have to play better on the defensive side. I, I think that A.J. Brown hit that we saw late in the second quarter before halftime, I think it kind of changed the mentality of this whole team. They, were, they came in and were shell-shocked. They were stunned early on, and LSU was, was the aggressor. And then all of a sudden that hit came. They get the field goal instead of the touchdown. I still agree with Levy. I would have gone for six. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, but ever since then, it's like they've come alive. Defensively, they're playing more physically. Offensively, they're start, they're starting to get some push up front. It just feels different. And by the way, half the crowd left at halftime for LSU. That doesn't yeah. help them. 
the situation. That's a great point. Good factor there. Edwards Elaire. Trying to cut it up. You can see exactly what he's running into. We're running away from down the sideline of the 34. We're running into at Denver. All right, Adnan, thank you. Keeping us posted on everything going on. Todd Harris Jr. is the injured player down for LSU. You know, I think just to follow up on Todd's point, that yes. A.J. Brown hit, uh, it, was on, it wasn't just the hit itself, but it was the way that now the team started to talk and jab back and forth at each other, and that kind of woke up this old Miss team. You see the hit, right, and that was one thing, but then it led to kind of a quarter, really, of of talk back and forth and I think that's kind of what got this Ole Miss team woken up and they're in this football game. I mean I know they played horribly right uh, and they've been run over in the first half but a two score game anything can happen you get an interception fumble return for a touchdown and you're back in. It. No they, they needed the spark and, and it, that spark can come in many different ways and you wouldn't expect a block by a wide receiver to be that spark but it certainly appears to be that way. Hey, that last Ole Miss drive, look, they need the touchdown again. They went 13 plays, okay? You would think on a 13-play touchdown drive, you're starting at the 10, the 15, the 20. They started from their own 41. That's a lot of plays to move up and down the field on this LSU defense. It probably needs a breather. See what the offense can do. Burrow comes out throwing, able to hit with Justin Jefferson. And LSU has had lots of big leads this season. And games have tightened up on them in the second half. They're trying to avoid that tonight. On the way is Terrence Marshall. That's one way to hang on to a big lead. Marshall down the sideline. He is pushed out inside the 10-yard line. And it looked like Ole Miss had a chance to bring him down. Jalen Julius, the corner. You got to make this tackle. You're in good position. Okay, he makes the play, but look at that. I mean, that's just horrible tackling by this secondary, and that's been the, the biggest issue they've had all season. First down and goal. Edwards Alaire. Down to the six. Josiah Cody makes the stop. Edwards Alaire and Nick Brosette have really been sharing the bulk of the carries. They're super best friends, and yet they played at rival high schools growing up. They've been going up against each other, and here they're sharing the football, the running game for this LSU offense. Second down and goal. Four to throw. Justin Jefferson and some good defense. No missed tackle there. Ken Webster, who probably was the best cover corner on this Ole Miss defense until he blew out his knee back in 2016. He made the sure-handed tackle there. Yeah, well, Wesley McGriff, he's, he's got to find at least four guys back there that can tackle and do it consistently. Webster has been dealing with a hamstring injury, and uh, finally he's getting back healthy. He needs to be out there. He's a little bit more physical than Jalen Julius, who just gave up that big pass play. Keep in mind, LSU has fumbled their last two trips into the red zone, and here they are knocking on the door again. Burrow to throw. And it is caught complete. Touchdown, Justin Jefferson. An answer, and in a hurry, by LSU. a great route from Justin Jefferson. They identified man-to-man -man coverage. Watch the patience from the route to come inside, act like you're running a slant, and then go out to the corner. And this ball is thrown perfectly from Joe Burrow right in the breadbasket. That is well executed. Jefferson is, is their double move receiver, probably their most reliable receiver. And in the red zone, they like to target him. Extra point on the way and good. LSU responds in a hurry. Five plays, 67 yards. And the drive, they answer quickly in less than two minutes. For Burrow, it's a career night. But again, you have to keep in mind, it's only his fifth start. I and mean, he hasn't played a lot, but he's been around a lot. And speaking of that, when he finds out 
that Ohio State won. He will be very pleased. We asked him after transferring out of Ohio State to still root for the Buckeyes. He said he loves those guys. Yeah, loves yeah. that coaching staff, loves his teammates, and uh, he just wanted to play. And he lost the battle there to Dwayne Haskins. I thought it was funny. You know, last year's game when JT Barrett gets hurt, Dwayne Haskins comes into the game against Michigan. He was Haskins was so nervous to get in the game, he grabbed the wrong helmet to yeah. go into the game. He grabbed Joe Burrow's helmet right. and put it on. I said, there was no way that thing was fitting on my head. <laughs> And you can see Haskins on the play as well. He had a great, a great piece on game day today talking about that. He got to put his mouthpiece in as well. It's still <laughs> hanging out of the wrong helmet. So hey, these kids have a lot going on. There's no question. And look, it seems it works. It's worked out for Haskins in Columbus, and it certainly looks like it's working out for Burrow here. But we see this quarterback movement around college football now. It's not working out everywhere. I'm good with the graduate transfers. Yep. That I completely get, and that's what's happening here with Joe Burrow. I just don't like the immediate knee-jerk reaction by some of these young quarterbacks that, like, like LSU had, right, Justin McMillan and some others. Uh, I don't like those kind of knee-jerk transfers at the quarterback position. So we told you that Burrow is rooting for the Buckeyes, and apparently there's some fans at Ohio State. In that one student section, they've added a lot of uh, <laughs> EAXs. You see, they've uh, changed the spelling of Joe Burrow's name, and uh, they wish him the best. Uh, so go Bucks and uh, go Tigers as well. All in good fun. Although the quarterback situation at Clemson, not all in good fun. Uh, what a week Dabo Sweeney had. What a week he's going to have, and they still get away with the win today. See the status of Trevor Lawrence being belted today. And you wonder what Kelly Bryant is thinking. That will be discussed all week around college football. 35 13, LSU leads here at home. Final 90 seconds of quarter number three. The SEC home opener for LSU. First look at Armani Linton. Thought about throwing it, and instead he'll cut it back and run with it for the first down. He's out to the 37-yard line. That's a he great a seven decision. On the play. Yeah, that's a great decision by Armani Lynn. He wanted to throw the ball back to Tayamo. Here goes Tayamo. This was a throwback pass, not there. So they coach you, retrace your steps, go right back through how that play was going to be blocked, and that was well done. Tayamo will throw this to AJ Brown. They're going to make another play. Again, you know the Tigers are looking to tee off on Brown still anytime they can. Memories are short. So are the tempers. 40 seconds left in this third quarter. Well, it's been pretty consistent the way that Dave Aranda has decided to play these receivers. They're leaving Greedy Williams on DK Metcalf the entire night down here, and then they're just trying to react to A.J. Brown and get him on the ground when he has the football. Tom able to get it out to Demarcus Lodge in some space. And he's got first down yard. John Battle forced him out. Well, Lodge continues to come on for this offense. They have five receivers that really are outstanding receivers. They got some young guys in Braylon Sanders and Elijah Moore who they're really excited about. The true freshman, they think he's going to be an outstanding player. Tomo to throw. And too high. Looks like it went through the hands of DK Metcalf. Metcalf goes from 6 4. When Ta'amu was missed, he's been high tonight. DK Metcalf should not be out on that football field. I know he's trying to grit through it, but he's he's looked really gimpy out there. That ball was just, and you see Phil Longo saying, hey, are you okay? Are you all right? I know he's not going to draw up any plays for him right now if he can't run. He might just be out there for the decoy to keep Williams off of A.J. Brown. Final play of the third quarter. Down with all sorts of time. Able to zip it in there to Elijah Moore. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. Fifth ranked LSU looking to keep their perfect season alive. They're having their way. The Rebels of Ole Miss. 35-13 on our way to the fourth. Garth Brooks, Colin Baton Rouge, player into the backdrop. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay. We open up quarter number four on a rainy night.
Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Jordan Damu is on the run. We'll get out across the 25 and has first down yardage. I don't want to name drop Greece, but I have Garth Brooks' personal cell phone number in my phone. Who is the most famous person you have number in your in your cell phone? Uh, uh, Tommy Chain. No, come on, really. <laughs> John Elway? You got somebody bigger than Elway? How about outside of sports? Nick Shea, who you got on your phone and you're rolling it on your cell phone? What kind of stupid question is that? Yeah, right? I mean, you, know, oh, you don't have right somebody over. famous in your cell phone? You don't sound great right now, Levy. <laughs> you got Van Pelt's number? No? He won't, he won't give you his number either, huh? <laughs> yeah, just email. <laughs> you are such a name dropper. I don't want a name drop. De Niro told me but. never, never <laughs> name drop. <laughs> oh. Bobby. I call him Bobby, but that's me. Second and 13. <laughs> You're not going to give me anything? No, no, I'm not giving you anybody in my uh, role. Right. He, already, he already gave you McShane. <laughs> that was good enough, huh? On the ground. Woolard, the ball carrier. Bring up a third down. Whoa, that's jarring. Put, put him in. <laughs> that guy's not missing any tackles. Look at him. something now. Third and 12. Those that have remained in the rain make as much noise as they can. Tamu buying time and throwing. And it is incomplete. Carry Vincent had the coverage on A.J. Brown. I tell you what, this offense, when they get behind, like in these situations, this is an offense that doesn't have a whole lot of concepts, doesn't have a whole lot of plays. You see A.J. Brown down here, but I don't, I don't know that they have enough plays, to be totally honest with you, to get back in this football game when you're asked to throw and get back from a, a big deficit I think this is just exhaustion from A.J. Brown he looked OK and then he got up and seen a few players in the last few series cramp up and it, it's raining out but it's it's really humid and yeah. it's still hot it's still probably 75 degrees so it's been a long hot humid night yeah do they have enough plays do they have enough players right we've seen Metcalf go down and then Brown tough sledding for Ole Miss here. Ole Miss will be home next week for Louisiana Monroe. Chance to get healthy there. We mentioned LSU will go on the road and play at Florida in the swamp. That should be interesting. Big win today for for Florida and Dan Mullen going back to Starkville and yeah. uh, getting that win. That was huge for him. Strange bedfellows indeed. As Brown has helped off. Luke Logan will come on. From 40 yards away, he's already made from 30 and 17. On the way. And the sophomore from Hattiesburg has that one. Make things a little more respectable. 35, 16, 13 minutes to play. Let's take a look at tonight's PlayStation Player Index. Joe Burrow's having himself a night. Yeah, having a great night, except for this one play where he gets your, your breath knocked out of you. But he's been efficient. And certainly uh, his number 17, 24, three touchdowns, and close to 270 yards. I've been impressed with, with Joe Burrow tonight. And he continues to grow each and every week. I get it. Ole Miss is a horrible defense. OK, I get it. I'm not pumping Joe Burrow. But we're going to find out a lot more about him next week. He goes to the Swamp and then the Georgia Bulldogs come to Death Valley. Next two weeks, we're going to find out a lot more about Joe Burrow. And Ole Miss will kick it deep. Keep in mind, Burrow is also their leading rusher tonight yeah. with 58 yards. So he really is doing it all. And Burrow has yet 
as a college quarterback to throw an interception. We don't want to jinx him. Has not thrown an interception since his last game in high school. As you see what he and the Tigers will face upcoming. Minds everywhere you look. Yeah, it's going to be a struggle. We knew that. I mean, it, this uh, this LSU team, obviously, every single year we talk about the Alabama game. Alabama looks stronger this year than they ever have. Yes. On the ground, row set, patiently running. We were talking with Coach Orgeron yesterday, and I asked him, I know it's week to week, Coach. You block out all the noise. That's his favorite saying, right? But I looked at him as he, as he stood up and walked out. I said, yeah, you look at that Alabama. You see what they're doing over there with Tua Tungavaloa and that offense? He's like, yeah, yeah man, I see what's going on. Unbelievable what they have done. And, and Coach O says, listen, they won 62 to 7 against this Ole Miss team. And we're going to have a dogfight against them tomorrow night. Now they've, they've played well, but you can see the difference. On the money to Justin Jefferson, spinning twice for extra yardage. You mentioned uh, Tua Tungabailoa. Of course, Mackenzie Milton had another big game today. And the quarterbacks who get together, and the Hawaii is producing All great tight, yeah. quarterback talent now, and they are very, very close. All these guys are really close. They train together, Tua and Jordan and uh, McKenzie, and they all idolize Marcus Mariota. No surprise there, but when we were talking with Tom last night, and he said, you know, I really grew up going to Hawaii games and watching Cole Brennan. Okay. It was interesting. He said back then he didn't even know anything about the SEC. He was focused on the whack. Could you imagine right, that? Right. <laughs> And, and you get it if, you, if you're from there and you live there. And he's all about Hawaii. And asks, you know, what makes you special? What are the kids in the, the mainland don't know necessarily? He goes, we are here to spread the love, spread the aloha. That's what we want to do. Right. So. Here's Burrow. For first down yardage. Speaking of Hawaii, by the way, Feely the Warrior is in the building. Now, he's looked better <laughs> and he's looked happier. Who's really the warrior? Tell me. He was the mascot from Hawaii back in the day. And he's the father of Braden, who is so important to this LSU defense. The Fajokos. Wow. You see them? Back in the day, all Braden wanted to do, you know, McShea gets to bring his son to work. Right. Right? And this is what Braden wanted to do. He went with his dad to work. The Vili. Wow, that is so cool. They would do the shows, right, before yep. the Hawaii games? And you remember, their pregames were like no other pregames. Wow. Get the folks it's ready. That's really cool. You think a little rain's going to bother that guy? No, Guy's no, a warrior. Not going to put out his fire. <laughs> think he's worried about his hair right now? No <laughs> chance. Well, and Braden Fajoko has become an important part of this defense. He was a transfer from Texas Tech. But he has quickly assumed a leadership role. He's on the leadership council uh, for Ed Orgeron, and his voice matters in that room. Now, speaking of that leadership council, they had a players-only meeting in August after they lost the two transfer quarterbacks, three players suspended, every negativity swirling around Coach O. And he brought that leadership council, Devin White, for Oko, Morrow, all together, and they addressed the team on their own. On the ground, and it's gross set. And I thought what, what White said was interesting. He said, in the past, after tough losses, the leadership council would get together, try to settle the team. They wanted to get this straight before they could lose a game, before the season even started, get everybody on the same page with the transfers and what was going on with the program. And uh, they have surpassed expectations. Coach O even admitted he did not think they would be in this spot at this time, but he said they were better than some of the so-called experts thought they were. Yeah, he thought he had talent. He knew that, and he didn't. He didn't want to let the fact that Lowell Narcisse and Justin McMillan transferred, and the next day he met with that leadership council. I thought it was interesting too, with Devin White saying that part of my message was to the young kids. That, you know, I looked around and these guys were complaining about having to play on special teams and that's how I made a name for myself. And if you want to be a part of this thing, then be a part of it and get involved on special teams. If you don't, then get out of this room. We don't want you here. Well, Coach O's got them rolling now. 4-0 on their way to 5-0 and 
and ranked fifth in the country with ten and a half to play here in the fourth quarter leading 35 16 and looking for more. I think they need to get Lloyd Cushenberry out of the game their center he, he was a little shaken up they're taking him out right now but up 35 to 16 he got rolled up on one play that is a player that they cannot afford to lose they have had so many injuries Steve on that offensive line and he has been the mainstay. Cole Smith the true freshman has checked in behind Cushenberry on the ground. It's Bro's set. They've had a number of offensive linemen get hurt and rolled up. Here's Cushenberry right here. Let's see what happens if he gets rolled up. Oh yeah. I mean, you're just standing around as an offensive lineman, and that's that's your nightmare right there is to get rolled up your knee. They've already had Chase Hines get hurt, Sidney Charles gets hurt, Garrett Brumfield hurt a knee, and he's been out. And when Cushenberry is called the heart and soul, you think, oh, the heart and soul of the offensive line. No, no. The heart and soul of the entire offense is that center. There's Burrow on the run, and he will smartly step out. But that might have been close to another flag. Fourth down upcoming. That's a tough young man and one of the smartest players they have offensively. We were talking with Steve Ensminger about how crucial a role he plays and that center position is so important. And we talk a lot about Joe Burrow making decisions and getting checks right, but Cushenberry just does the same amount. 26 yard attempt for Cole Tracy. On the way, and it is good. LSU has put up over 500 yards of offense, handed it to Ole Miss tonight, 38-16. ESPN College Football is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Let's see, let's let this go out. Who's going to enjoy this? Who's going to enjoy all this? Oh, there's our booth coordinator, Brittany. It's a home game for her. Yeah. She knows everybody in town. Baton Rouge native. Taking care of us here and everywhere we go. It's great hospitality here. Monday night. AFC West battle, the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs in the Mile High City will take on the Broncos. Gameplay simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. So I'm going to slow be ready down for that one. Somebody going to slow down Patrick Mahomes? Uh, well, there's a guy on the other side. You know, his name's Von Miller. I don't know if you yeah. heard of him. I'm familiar? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. He's got to have a. He's got to have a huge game. But I'm going to be watching. You know, there's some news that came out. Unfortunately, Jake Butt, the yeah, tight end for good. for Denver, torn ACL. So if you want to pick up somebody in your fantasy league, leaves. Okay. Remember, you, right. you were the play-by-play -play voice of the Broncos preseason. Remember Matt Lacoste? Yes, I do. He's gonna. Yep. He has to have more of a role in that Denver offense. Sounds right. like you two did their preseason game. Hey, something. listen, Mr. Chiefs down there, okay, <laughs> Mr. Red Hat. So let, the reason the fantasy thing comes up is because in commercial we can hear the crowd asking McShay <laughs> for fantasy tips down there on the field. Things have gotten bad down here. <laughs> Are you giving good advice? I handed it over. Like greasy answer. <laughs> Everybody wants to know Le'Veon Bell. What should I do Le'Veon Bell? McShay, what should I do? He said, ask Greasy. <laughs> I told him to pick up James Conner. Yes. Yep. Yeah, we're going to be all over uh, McShay's Chiefs on Monday night. Yes, the Broncos Chiefs battle is a personal battle here. Yep. Our broadcast group. Todd, as you know, is the preseason voice of the Kansas City Chiefs for many, many years. <laughs> or two games. <laughs> Metcalf in and out of his hands. Todd still raining down there by any chance. Yep. All righty. <laughs> Are you guarding the Magnolia Trophy over there, Todd? Uh, let me see. It's right it's next to you the other way. <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've, walked, I've walked by this 70 times tonight. I've seen it once. It's all about the Magnolia Bowl. Beautiful. Dabu completes to A.J. Brown, hit as he made the catch by Greedy Williams. Greedy hasn't had enough. 
that was a res that was a lot of respect there from Greedy Williams. Okay, he had a guy that was vulnerable. He knows AJ Brown is a big time receiver. He could have gone low. You know, he didn't. He just kind of said, "Hey, man, you're in a bad spot. I'm not going to hit you where you get hurt." Really like that approach and respect from Greedy Williams. Fourth down. Ole Miss is going, as you might expect. The flag flies. False start. Offense number 79. Five yard penalty. And then fourth down. Do <laughs> you think Matt Rule doesn't? Matt Luke doesn't care. I mean, uh, look at that. He's he is uh, fighting till the end. He wanted to go for it. Now you have a penalty back you up. You got to punt. He is a emotional head coach. I mean, his mentor is David Cutcliffe, one of the best in the business. By the way, he's having a great year at Duke so far, but he's brought up by some of the best. Phil Fulmer. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 46. Five yard penalty, remains fourth down. False start while trying to punt. Matt Luke went uh, six and six last year at the interim tag won the Egg Bowl which was thrilling the video was really emotional after that win that really secured him the job as the full time head coach. Well you got to think I mean he's he, he did get a, a, a job but you still have to think that he's got to prove it right he's got to prove that uh, he belongs in this spot no question about it everybody does. It's one thing to get the dream job. It's another thing to be successful and keep it under seven to play in the fourth. Uh, it's on a scale of uh, one to ten. I'd say about a uh, eleven. No, oh, you've seen much worse. <laughs> you've seen much worse out of me. It's the humidity, Scott. It's uh, it's fabulous. Look, the rain has has taken away from it a little bit, and uh, uh, the fact that Ole Miss really hasn't been all that competitive tonight has taken away. But the start of it, everybody was fired up all week for this game, and uh, the stadium is gorgeous. SVP, at least yeah. we got him to a pregame tailgate. He had the jambalaya, yeah. but he refused the boudin balls. Uh, just not not up to par. <laughs> All right, sounds good. See you on the other side. No bad beats here tonight, Scott. Not this one here tonight. Scott Van Pelt, Sports Center, coming up immediately after we are through here. Six eleven to go in the fourth. Eleven. <laughs> Get it in Miami one time. Not in December in the Orange Bowl. That's right. Big McShay's at eleven right now. The moisture. I don't even know what it is. Rain and sweat. <laughs> I'm sweating my elbows, my knees before the game even started. <laughs> the band. Well, he, he said that he wanted the band to play neck. That's right. And he said he was going to pay the fine. Okay. Ben Pelt does deep pockets, as yeah. you know. So. <laughs> he can pay some fines, that man. He's a fine gentleman himself. Five and a half to go. I, wanna, I wanted to ask him what's going on with the uh, USA team in the Ryder Cup. I'll tell you about that too. Not been impressive first two days. No. I expected better. I didn't expect much. On the ground. Edwards Alaire has carried the bulk. Will carry the chains for the first down. Well, we talked about the missed tackles for Ole Miss coming into this game 27 a week ago against Kent State and it's continued predictably in this game. Julius the corner really has been missed five or six tackles on big plays uh, but it's been shared across the board. You're going to miss some tackles. I get it right. You're going to sure. have some in a game but things like that where you give up a, a routine tackle and it's a plus 50 game. I mean that's just a backbreaker. That last play for example was third and ten and they get they yeah. get 14 out of it. So 15 missed tackles tonight. And you're trying to avoid these explosive plays, but when you miss tackles, you turn nothing into an explosive play. So, and, and it 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 makes it it clouds the judgment of LSU. Like, 
how do we know how good the Tigers are based on this performance because of the defense they're going up against? You had to come in and you had to take care of your business. Okay, this is Ole Miss has some pride, right? They, they have a, a very explosive offense and they played very well defensively against that offense, obviously allowed only 16 points. Uh, I don't think we know yet. We can't say definitively LSU offensively would be able to compete right with with Georgia Alabama okay so Good that's so. that's where we're going to have to get the rubber meets road but they did go on the road against a very good Auburn team and Auburn defense and defensive line and outgained them on the ground and through the air in that game and beat them on the road. So you got to give them credit. That's really uh, what's giving the LSU faithful the most hope right now. Those last 10 minutes at Auburn yep. for Joe Burrow was really something else. And we asked the LSU coaching staff, were they surprised if Burrow show them anything in that spot? Because that was the real first big test for Burrow, see what they got. And, they said, no, the lights are never too big for this guy. And we keep talking about the transfers, and it's Burrow and Tracy, the quarterback and the kicker, that have been the big difference so far for yeah. Ole Miss. No I mean, rather for LSU. <laughs> Burrow still running with the football. The Tigers' leading rusher will get him for the touchdown and take the extra hit at the end. Touchdown LSU, 35-yard run for the score for Joe Burrow. And I get the frustration from the guys in red. I do. Yeah, that's Cedric Woods who hit him after he got into the end zone, right as he got in there. And him hustle. That's a hustle play from Woods. Now just don't stand over the guy. That's listen, you're getting your butt whipped here in this game. You have no place to stand over a guy. If you're After the touchdown, unsportsmanlike conduct, number eight of the defense. A penalty is 15 yards of being forced on a succeeding kickoff. That's number eight's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. That's CJ Miller. Well, what happens is you, Woods hits him here. And that's a clean hit. Like, that's a clean hit. I have no issue with that whatsoever. But when you come and stand over the quarterback as he rolls into the into the end of the end zone, then all of his linemen are going to come over there. Now you got a problem. Extra point is on the way. Burrow has carried the football nine rushes for 96 yards, 292 yards passing. Joe Burrow, have yourself a ball game. LSU on their way. It's been announced, and now we can tell you the big game next Saturday night. College football, 8 Eastern ABC, Notre Dame heads to Lane Stadium to take on Virginia Tech. The Irish beating Stanford tonight, 38-17, rather handily at home. They'll go on the road. Blacksburg's an always an interesting yeah. place to play. Lane Stadium, it would be interesting to yeah. see if Josh Jackson, the quarterback, is back for that game. I don't think he right. played today. Uh, Tech beat Duke today by a score of 31 to 14. We came into this game wondering about the matchup of Greedy Williams on these receivers, DK Metcalf and AJ Brown for Ole Miss, and Greedy Williams has been up to the task. I've been really impressed, and Todd mentioned this, right? He's very instinctive in man coverage, right? Always has his eyes back to the quarterback. But the thing that's impressed me is he's been physical today. He has not backed down to much bigger wide receivers at any point. You know it was cool too, there was a moment when A.J. Brown a few series ago was being helped off the field when he had that, that injury near the end zone. And Greedy, for all the battles they had today, back and forth, as physical as they were, he went over and just gave him a little high five. And you could just tell the respect there between those two players. I'd like to see that. Tamu is dragged down. Jacob Phillips dragged him down with one arm. And I think you saw also, Todd, when, when there was a ball thrown to A.J. Brown in the flat and Greedy Williams had a chance to blow him up, but he didn't. He just kind of loved him up and got him on the ground. Great sign of respect. I can't wait for the Coach O interview postgame. It was a really, it was, it was neat to meet him, neat to sit down with him, meet him face to face, uh, in person for the first time. To me, see Coach Ogeron on television all the time. He's sort of bigger than life. Uh, he comes across that way, and uh, he's just like that. He 
things you got to root for. You said he was he was smaller than you thought he was going to be. Yes, he, you know, the cameras can make you appear to be bigger. Uh, you know what? He's in pretty good shape. You know. Yeah, that's that's Working on some stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I know from being down here with you two for the past two nights, it's not easy to keep the weight off yeah, down here. We got to get out of this town. <laughs> Did not go to Coach O's favorite place, Mike Anderson, but uh, we got our fair share of Cajun fans. Yes, we did. Third and five. Handoff. It's Woolard. And they'll move the sticks and run the clock. Just to clean up uh, a little housekeeping there. I told you about the unsportsmanlike on uh, C.J. Miller for Ole Miss. It was actually, well, Zed's not dead, but he was penalized. Zedrick Woods, uh, 36, not number eight, was penalized the last unsportsmanlike conduct for standing over Joe Burrow. Tamu will slide down. 45-16, and uh, the critics of Ole Miss will be like, hey, look what happens when you play, you know, some big boy teams, right? Got their doors blown off against Alabama. And then here at LSU, 45 to 16. Well, we knew this this team and this squad, as it's currently constructed, is not going to compete with the big boys in the SEC. It's just not where they are. And Matt Luke's got a long road ahead of him. Uh, but uh, we kind of anticipated this team wouldn't be up to snuff. The big boys. Should be one more snap. LSU will be set up for a test next week at Florida. Then they get Georgia here. And that'll always be a good time. That's a really good idea there for Joe Burrow. Love up that offensive line. Go over there and tell them, hey, listen, man, I had a career night tonight, almost 300 yards passing, almost 100 yards rushing, and a touchdown. Take care of the ones that take care of you. Zeros on the clock. Maybe you'll hear from Coach O on Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. Final score, Baton Rouge, all LSU tonight, 45 to 16. For Brian Greasy, Todd McShea, our producer Josh Hopkins, director Mike Schwab, and our outstanding crew. I'm Steve Lee. It's been a pleasure to bring you a Saturday night game from Death Valley. Baton Rouge. Now to SVP and Sports Center.